I think I know everybody here, but I'm a tree warden. I'm Neil. Do you want a chair? Grab that chair next to I've got one right here. <clears throat> um, yeah, so I'll give a little bit of background on the shade tree plan and why we're doing it, um, and then we can talk about it. Uh, so there's been a tree, there have been tree warden laws for decades that the states had, and um, they were kind of poorly defined. It was laws about how to manage shade trees, but they didn't have any definition for what a shade tree was. And the way the, um, a lot of people, including Callis, have been interpreting that was basically everything in the right of way or on town-owned properties is a shade tree, and we've got to treat it that way. And that's because there are a handful of court cases in different towns that kind of established that precedent. Um, and so when the state just recently updated the tree ward in the statute, reason for that, or one of the real reasons, was just to define shade tree and make it clear what people are supposed to do. And uh, what they did is they said, any tree in the right-of-way or on a town-owned property that was planted by the town is a shade tree, and any tree that the town says is a shade tree in their shade tree preservation plan. So they kind of left it to towns. Um, and that's why we started working on it, and I wrote this with the Conservation Commission over the last year, maybe it's been more than that. Um, and I think the kind of meat of it is the definition of the shade tree, which in here it says that any tree over six inches on a town right of way is a shade tree. And that's kind of where we were before. So I think it's kind of maintaining the status quo in that way. You said town right of way, right? Y yes, town, uh, yeah, right. Town Six highway inches right of way. Town. Um, and, then I, and then it's four inches on town property. So a little bit lower threshold, like on this property. Um, so you can still mow little trees that have gotten established, but anything that's become a real tree, I guess is something that has to go before the tree warden. Um, and the process for cutting all or part of a shade tree is that it has to get warmed. It used to be that any, sh any shade tree had to have a hearing unless it was hazardous before it could be cut. And they made it a little bit easier in the statute. So now you, it has to be warmed for 15 days. And if nobody appeals it, then you can cut it. And if it's appealed, then there's a hearing. Okay, so, so, you, so you don't have to have a hearing? Not unless somebody appeals it, is unhappy about the tree in question. So yep. up until this past year, I had a 200-year-old uh, maple. Yes. That most of it had rotted and fallen away, and there was a little bit <laughs> still there. Might have been greater than six inches. Uh -huh. And that finally broke off. Uh -huh. But that is not something you can cut either, right? So it's stump diameter, even though it's rotten. And it wasn't a threat to anything. It wasn't a threat. Yeah, so there's um, a hazard tree. If it's considered a hazard tree, then you can cut it. Then it's exempt from this. There are the, few... You don't need prior authorization? Or... Not by state statute, but okay. I... Um, and I think I wrote in here kind of like, if you don't know if it's a hazard tree, then it's on you to ask the tree warden. Yeah. And I've got a process that I use that's kind of trying to be objective, that's a forest service um, process for assessing what's a hazard tree. So yeah, you're right. If there's no part of it that's going to fall on anything, then it's not a hazard tree. Right. So that maybe would have been something. It was pretty nasty and ugly. So I'm yeah. glad the rest of it fell, but you know, it's yeah. something we probably want to keep. So when you say it has to be warned, you would do an official notice like, like you did for this? I would this. write to any abutting landowners and, and I would do a post a notice in at least two places in town and I'd use, you know, the places we normally post. Okay, so the store yeah, and the post it's office. And Maple Corner Store, East Cal's Post Office, Front Porch Forum, Town, town Website. Town Website and, and town, the Town Office. Town so office, that's five. Yes. Right. Um, yep. Yeah, and then if nobody has any problem with it, you have to wait 15 days and then you can cut it or prune it. It includes cutting parts of trees. Um, but if somebody does have a problem, then there's 
a hearing and then the select board decides. Oh, the select board happen. decides. Yeah, yeah, that was oh, the other okay. nice well, change is that they put it on the select board, not me. Oh, oh great. So that's so a nice use of pruning, though, because I mean, like, if you kind of like limb that's kind of largely in the turf, you're like, a, not. even limbing something on one limb. You yes. Can, you got to do you that. Yes. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So yeah, and I, um, so the road crew, you know, the kind of biggest um, burden from this is probably on the road crew, and I imagine something like that, if they have a program where they're going to be pruning trees, it'd be kind of like, what I imagine happening is, and they should have done this in the past, this is, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be kind of a batch, like, look, we're going to prune all these trees along this side of the road, and here's what we're going to do, and you'd warn it, even if it's 20 trees. Um, so even the road commissioner has to request yeah. permission, as he did for hazardous trees. Yeah, uh, he did for um, trees that were. He would ask me if they were hazardous, oh, that's and right. if they were not hazardous, then we'd have a hearing, hearing. and they were greater than six inches. We'd have a hearing, um, yeah. so it makes it a little bit easier now because. The, yeah, I guess my brain is thinking process. So you warn it, you have a hearing. Who's taking? minutes and who's and who's writing the decision and issuing it the way the state statute is written it's the select board that has the hearing that and that makes a decision if there's an appeal it goes to the okay. select board and it's like a select board meeting but it's a hearing and then they hear whoever wants to testify about it and then make a decision and then there's an appeal process if somebody has a problem with the select decision. But before when you were doing it and it was just <clears throat> the road commissioner and stuff. That was the tree warden would call the hearing. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. And then the tree warden decided. So the tree warden doesn't make decisions like that anymore. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. But you make the initial decision, just not. I make the decision if it's a hazard tree or not. And um, and I warn it, which is like just right. putting it up there. And then if nobody appeals, then I just kind of automatically green light it. So we're sort of the first level of appeal in that Yes, way. exactly. Yeah. And then does it go to environmental court? Probably. I think that's right, but I, I'm not, I've got them here. Yeah. I could look it probably says, it's I just didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the other kind of piece of content in the shade tree preservation, the, the statutes require certain things to be in the shade tree preservation plan, including a plan for planting trees and maintaining trees. Um, and so we, and the, what's in here, kind of the thought was that it should guide us in how we might want to go about doing that if we were to have a more organized program of planting, but without tying anybody's hands. It's kind of where the text in here comes from. And then, go ahead. So, so other, have other towns, are, does everybody have the same plan to adopt? No, no. So I wrote this plan, different plan, towns are doing different things. East Montpelier has a plan that's pretty similar to ours. There are towns that have deliberately decided not to write a plan, which means that they're left with the kind of state minimum um, hmm. protection, which is just planted trees that are planted by the municipality. Um, and then there are towns that are kind of designating trees in certain areas as shade trees or specific trees, but not others. So there's a whole range of ways that people have hmm. dealt with this. And, um, and I think a lot of that too has to do with the type of town. You know, it's, it looks very different in an urban area mm -hmm. than in a place like Callis. Mm -hmm. Neil, one of the things you just mentioned is you left the flexibility around um, tree planting. May you may yeah, have that was my intent was to yeah. just be flexible. If you if you if you did establish a program for tree planting, then what do you imagine would be the process to put something like that in place? Um, I imagine, I, I think, we've talked about it on the Conservation Commission some at various times, and I think what makes sense is kind of like 
an ad hoc committee or something. Um, I guess it doesn't have to be ad hoc, but if you had a project you're interested in, kind of finding a handful of people that would be either kind of the tree warden would be overseeing it or it would be underneath the conservation commission, so like something like that. Yeah, a subcommittee of the conservation commission maybe. Um, but but the way I wrote it in here, it would still need select board approval before you actually planted trees. Like you'd have to. Mm -hmm. It's in the right of way. If well, it's yeah, if it's in the right of way or on a town-owned property. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Um, and then the other piece of this is uh, towns also adopt an ordinance, which is like the implementation of this plan, which we haven't done yet, and you. You adopt the plan first, the select board adopts a plan, and then afterwards we can write an ordinance that is like any other town ordinance and gets adopted in the same way, which I think means going to town meeting in well, front of everybody. No, we don't have a special, no, no, we have a hearing. Oh, okay. The ordinance are adopted yeah. by the select board. Yeah, we, we adopt, the, this is, it seems backwards to me, but the select board adopts the ordinance, and then residents have 45 days to um, argue right, that, yeah. yeah, to provide okay. feedback, or and I think it's going to have some. I don't know if it's is it. I think it's five percent of the registered voters. So it seems kind of it's always seemed backwards to me. Yeah, but we still that's have the way board it is. hearings for the right and the town draft ordinance. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, is there anything else I want to say? Uh, yeah. What would happen if we adopt this plan? but then we don't adopt an ordinance. The plan still has teeth because by state statute, what we defined as a shade tree in here is a shade tree. So it would, as soon as you adopted it, that would become the definition of a shade tree and the state law is already on the books that you can't cut a shade tree without doing this warning process. So that would all be there. Honestly, I haven't given a lot of thought to the ordinance piece, and I'm not really sure what it would do. The like, yeah, the state statute lays out, lays out the penalty for if you cut a tree when you weren't allowed to, and it makes clear that the tree warden is the person who enforces the law, and I'm not sure what an ordinance yeah, does. Yeah, I don't know what, what would be the benefit <clears throat> of having an ordinance if there's already a plan, there's already state statute, I don't know yeah. what the benefit would be. I guess we have to, yeah, I, I haven't really explored it, and I need yeah. to talk to the people at the state about it or yeah. whatever, and just kind of figure it out. But. And maybe they have a kind of a template for towns? Well, so um, nobody has passed a shade tree preservation plan yet, at least that I know of. I think that everybody's kind of working through this process, and there's a handful of towns that are at the stage we're at now of thinking about shade tree plans, but nobody's really. So So the urban and community forestry people are trying to put together resources for this, but they haven't done anything for an ordinance yet. They've been working with some towns on the plans and have some guidance on that. So the process then is right now, we hold this hearing and we have to adopt the plan within so many it just so many the, days or I don't think there's any time limit on it it's just that um, we, need, we need to have at least one public hearing and then you can adopt the plan and I think it's pretty flexible like the select board could choose to amend it or hold another hearing about it or mm -hmm. adopt it or whatever um, okay yeah and you haven't gotten any written comments or anything like that right? no I haven't heard from anybody yes so, yeah, I think we? it's terrific Great. <laughs> Done. Um, yeah, I don't, does anyone have any questions about the process or the plans or? Uh, I, have, I have a couple questions. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so on the first page, number three under designation of shade trees, number two, um, all trees in public ways that are greater than or equal to six inches in diameter, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Um, so in my family's case, as you know, we have a forest. We have a lot of shade trees in yes, the do. public right away. Yes. So we hired Neil to come and help us kind of trim it out, and then we hired somebody to come in and take out some of the dead trees. Yes. So I don't know if we took out anything that was four inches or six inches, but in that case, 
when the landowner is, you know, hiring yeah. <laughs> a yeah. pastor, you know, and then somebody come. It doesn't matter who it is. It would still, uh, it should be warned. So, so I think in your case, if there are more trees in there to cut, you'd kind of like identify the ones you want to cut. Mm -hmm. We'd put a flag around them so people could see okay. them, and we'd put out this warning and wait 15 days and see if anyone had any strong trees. Trees over six inches, six inches in all. Yes, right. right. Smaller trees, we wouldn't have to do it for. Okay. That's right. Um, then on page two, where it talks about planting on town hall property and yes. showing that in consultation with friends of the town hall. Since it's in the historic district, mm. does the advisory board be involved? Yes, that's a good point. And the friends of the town hall are not really affiliated, you know, they're not affiliated with the voters of the select board. So I'm wondering if this should be changed to just to the design advisory board yeah. of the select board. Where are, where are you, Don? Well, where on are you? page two. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It's the kind of long paragraph toward the bottom of the page. Um, should we oh, I see. Mm -hmm. So that should be not friends of the town hall, but design advisory. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, can I ask Don a question? Because yeah. I don't know anything about yeah. how the design advisory board works for the most part. But does somebody whose property is in the historic district have to go before the design advisory board if they want to cut it, say, a yes. mature tree yeah. on the property. Yeah. So this would be consistent in way. Right, right. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Um, and then on page three under number six, tree maintenance, that very last sentence, what? Is, some, is there something about permitting requirements? This is, um, yeah, this is, from the state statute, quoted from the state statute. So under state law, you can prune or cut a tree if you have to because of a state or federal law. And I, I'm not totally sure what a permitting requirement is. I think it's like road work that's permitted somehow through the state. I'm just yeah, yeah. Um, but there are some. Then on page four, under number seven, tree removal, that last paragraph, I found something confusing about that the sentence, trees that do, or that do meet one of the exceptions described above may be removed at any time by the tree warden, the deputy tree warden, another town official, or in the case of roadside trees, the road commissioner or landowner without prior approval. Is that, is that referencing a hazard tree? Yeah, yeah, the exceptions above are the uh, trees that pose a hazard to public safety, are affected by a disease or in-check control program. They're kind of these short list of exceptions to, so you can cut, so we can, a landowner or the road crew couldn't cut an ash tree because it's um, at risk of being infected by mm -hmm. ash borers and it's inside a quarantine area that the state has. So that's one of those exceptions. And when it says another town official, who might that be? <laughs> There's a lot of town officials. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, does the town, mm -hmm. town clerk make a decision, for instance? There you go. Yeah, I guess I was um, I was thinking about um, town-owned properties and kind of like someone who's select so board or their designate. Yeah, yeah, yeah so right. Select like board or designee. Select board or designee is the right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the that's. So that's not shade trees. We're talking about the kind of. Does it actually? Sorry, keep going. Uh, we're talking about hazard trees or small trees. So, um, so like if there was a tree on this property that was hazardous, and that I call the hazard, it it should still need the select board's approval to get removed. Or the designee. Or a designee. Yep. 
the the sentence though says trees that do not meet any of the exceptions may be removed at any time by the tree warden, deputy tree warden, um, another town official, which we're discussing select board, or in the case of roadside trees, road commissioner or land over without prior approval. So my question is whether we really need another town official. If we've got the tree warden, the deputy tree <laughs> warden, yeah. uh, the road commissioner, or or the road commissioner without prior approval. That it covers would, it would be the most knowledgeable to begin with, right? So that Oh, right. Um, okay. Yeah, I can see that. Denise is mentioning we're, we're you know we've been kicking around this idea of a department of public works director. Mm. So Take our whispering out of the closet. That would be the yeah. perfect person to be able to cut. Well, that's, yeah. well, that's what I'm so thinking we just about. Say it, does we, or does it mean, we haven't okay. established a right. position or anything yet, so yeah. that's why if we say select board or designee. Right. Yeah, then we're we, if we get to that point, mm -hmm. then the select board could designate it to the DPW. Mm -hmm. And that would be appropriate. That's what, where my thinking was going. Yeah. I have a question. I looked at the Planning Commission website and I didn't see any don't want the road commissioner saying that it needs to be done and then being the one to say that it needs to be done and that's all he needs. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so yeah. this is, so it's still only trees that are kind of exempt from the process. Okay. A tree that's a hazard. Okay. Or. So this is like um, something came down it's yeah. not something that's just always been there. Well, maybe. We had a it tree be, on the lawn, remember? Yeah. If it's an ash tree. Yeah, an ash tree. Or, you know, I mean, honestly, like a lot of the big, beautiful maples on our roadsides, if you kind of take an objective measure and say, is yeah. this a hazard tree? A lot of them are. They've got oh, rot in the middle are. and they're losing big limbs. So, that yeah. yeah, there are big, pretty trees that yeah. Yeah. can fall under that for sure. But all I'm saying is, Let's not make the road commissioner the only person that gets to see, to decide, and then go do it. Uh huh. Yeah. Before anybody else can even weigh in. Yeah. Does that, I mean, to me that sounds too, we, we always talk about trees with rot or some, that, you know, that have a physical, some physical threat, but there's also, there are also trees right on the edge of right away that are clear zone. Threats too. Did they, you could have a healthy tree. Is yeah. That, does that count in this? Is a healthy uh, tree? No. Good. The, yeah, that, the kind of precedent and a legal precedent is that it's only a hazardous tree if the tree itself, if there's is, a risk of failure. There you go. Um, okay. So if it's on a blind corner or whatever, it doesn't count. Good. Okay. Uh, so this paragraph is only about hazardous trees. We might want to. Yeah, just hazardous like, or diseased. Or it, it, it does. It does. Of that or it, well, it needs to be. It says clearer. that, but you have to read. You have to thread it together. It's like a double negative. Uh, yeah, healthy cherry trees that are not. So let's could, let's let's revert that. So trees that are. We're talking about trees that are a hazard to public safety, or are affected by right. You know, or are affected by disease or insect control. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's great. That, that or or need to be removed to comply with state or federal law. These are the trees that we're talking about yep. as being um, the type that could be removed by somebody, including the road commissioner. A tree that is a public a hazard of public safety. A tree that is affected by a disease or insect control program, or one that needs to be removed to comply with state or federal law. Or one that's just down and in the way. Yeah. Well, that's a hazard to public safety. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so that could be removed by the yeah. road commissioner. And so, so I think that the question is whether, you know, that's kind of the way it is now, right? That's the way it is that's now. That's the way it is now. And yeah. he always asks me because he, you know, he's good like that. He's good like that. Yeah. Um, he he always asks me to come and say if it's a hazard or not. You mean he gets Alfred? A, he gets a second opinion. So, yeah. That's but, so that yeah. case in point I brought up minutes ago, and, and you went out there, that ash tree, that massive ash tree, I think it was ash, on Bliss Pond Road, that was like this. Oh, yeah. And the root 
half the roots were like right on the embankment of the pond, and yeah. the other half was on the leaning side. So the what would hold it up? Right. It's not much there. Right. And then you guys, or the road crew, had it cut. Joe Bain cut it. Yeah. And it was we didn't know, but it was hollow inside too. Oh, was space. it? Yeah. yeah. So, um, because of the lean, would that be considered a has tree hazardous tree by definition? Do you want to? Um, you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. And, and the weight, it's not a little six inch, it was... Yeah. So uh, there's a number of things in the kind of protocol I've been using. There's a number of things and a lean in itself doesn't necessarily make it a hazard tree because there are healthy trees that have grown that way to reach the light but that are still strong. Um, but in that case, you know, the root impaction and definitely if there's signs of the roots lifting up, yeah, that's yeah, okay. like... A red flag, um, but there's a there's a whole kind of list of defects that can lead to it being a hazard tree. So if there was a healthy tree that was that there was concern for, but otherwise healthy, you could still make that determination independent. Like I'm thinking of okay, so probably you were very young, Merrill Laguerre, when he used to own that farm there on Route 14. Yeah was approached by Vermont Agency of Transportation. There was a limb that came off the massive tree. I can't remember what type it was. Back, what was it? Elm. It was an elm. Uh, it was massive. It was yeah, in the front yard. It was, it was a reaching. beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And this limb, this bough, was you know, the diameter of most tree trunks. And it was reaching over Route 14. And AOT said, we need to cut that. It's a hazard. And he said, you know, don't you dare over my dead body kind of thing. Yeah. As, this is hearsay. And then it wasn't too long after, and I don't think they saw rot. Yeah. But uh, it wasn't too long after a, a woman was driving home in a smaller car, and that whole thing really hit the fell car. on her car, and she wound up permanently injured. Yeah. Crushed her, crushed the car. Okay. Yeah, and this is like early 90s. And so, that was clearly a hazard. It was identified by AOT mm -hmm. for reasons other than the tree not being unhealthy. Um, so I just was yeah. wondering how do we contend with that? There are situations, situations right now, there's a tree that's a big leaner, might be East Montpelier, but every time I go by it, I'm like, Oof. Yeah. Just like the Bliss Pond tree. Right. Yeah. It seems like we need to have something like that. But we can't do cutting on the 14th. That's no, no, I'm saying that, yeah. but if that were on a town, uh, right. Right. right? But you're right. No the state highways are not part of this. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, my understanding of it is that you, you know, there's, there's kind of a, there's a category that can contribute to this kind of score that you tally a tree to decide if it's a hazard or not. That. Um, okay that you can kind of assign some risk for other factors. Oh, but generally okay. it would be and that's because you saw... The statute. It's neither. It's a Forest Service thing. The statute doesn't clarify. And in here I wrote, like, you use some approved methodology. But there are a number of different... The um, International Society of Arboriculture has one, if I'm saying that right. And then there's the Forest Service has one. So... So I, my feeling is kind of that the tree warden should have something so that they're being objective, but I didn't specify what. So if we're referencing a document that's going to be used as a standard of measure, we should have that attached to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So you think I? You think we should have a card? You have to use a certain a certain uh, yeah, measure. I think. Smart. Well, or or you should have a process through which you adopt an approach every three years. Because you don't, because I'm going to defer on John's point, you don't want to be accused of shopping around for the standard. Right. Even though it's a standard, like last week I used this organization standard and I like, uh -huh. I like this other organization better this week given this scenario because it gets me what I want. So to your point, Neil, of objectivity, if you lock a standard in for a period of time and use it re without regard to the you know, the circumstances. You could always, you know, every three years say, you know what, that's not really serving us anymore, and we're going to use a different one. But yeah. Now, well, what is this called? The standard what? Standard for, uh, for what? So my, the one that I've been using is the U.S. Forest Service's Community Tree Risk Evaluation Method. Um, 
Yeah. So, we, what do you, so, so that's what you've been using now? Yes. So that could be documented. You could put it in the next... You could yeah. put it on the minutes for the Conservation Commission and say, hey, yeah. guys... So you're saying it doesn't need to be in this plan, but no, that... That you have a process where you memorialize It should be documented what I'm using. So that you are not shopping. And yes. if it's dated, if they, if they update it, yep. yeah. if mm -hmm. the date we adopt this most current version, that should be cited, say it was, mm -hmm. I don't know, yep. 2009, <coughs> April 1st, 2009. That's the reference. So if they then update it, we, we are still locked into that original yeah. cited or measure. Or not. Or you could say you're going to evolve if they update Well, if you evolve, better, you need, then you need to be warned in the document because otherwise it's moving it. Public doesn't get an opportunity to comment on the next iteration. Could say we, at the federal level, we don't care about this category of trees, and we may. And, and we might. I think you were saying that it wouldn't be in this plan at all, but that I should reference it. Re, that I should write it down somewhere so that I can show people that I is that true? Well, no, I think it, you it's could, incorporated by reference. Well, you say here, you could you could rather than locking yourself in here, you could say that on. You know, April one of each year, the uh -huh. tree the tree warden meets with the conservation commissioner and or the conservation yeah the, con the somewhere where it's documented the conservation commission and reports for the ensuing year which which plan which tree but it doesn't even have to be a year it could be every three years uh -huh. and then you just that way you have not just listed a bunch you have picked. you've picked and you've alerted everybody what the standard is so now everybody so can look in those minutes and see what i'm doing and, and then you and then you are both you and the public are protected yeah. you're protected because somebody wants you a different one you can say talk to the hand baby we lock this down on april one that's what i'm using uh -huh. and we'll revisit it in three years and we can have a conversation then yeah. but it would be good if it's not too long to maybe attach it so that people know what you're yeah, you what you're using, using or put it on the website with a link or something. Right, something. Yeah. yeah. Just so people don't have to hunt for it. Yeah. Yeah. Does okay. that, and at that point too, it probably should be open ended so that can be revised on like a three year schedule. But we'd want to make sure that if it doesn't get revisited, that that stands. Right. Until uh -huh. until <laughs> until it's readopted. Readopted. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, come in. Come on in. We're not serving the public tonight. <laughs> uh, you can come on in and enjoy our meeting. What do you mean you're not serving? We're not serving food tonight. Oh, darn. <laughs> Before we move on from that paragraph, uh, one thing to consider, especially with EAD, is that the way it reads now is that the, the town officials can basically just do what they want, where they want to. Um, if it's a hazard tree, we may run across the fact that some landowners treating their, their ash tree, and if you cut that tree down, if it's my tree, you're probably going to get a bill. Um, it's a significant investment. Yeah. So I just had the courtesy of a no final landowner for show of concern about the tree. That's a good point. They might want the rather than the firewood, too. Right? Yeah, right. I mean, it's, yeah, the wood product would be the landowner. So anyway, but the. No, so, well, yeah, if you have a tree on your front, and you're not moving it right away, you want to maintain it with a herbicide. Oh, right. oh, I see. Such a sign. And then if that's an investment you make on your part for the preservation of that tree, the way this is written is the town can cut that tree without notice. But wouldn't you want it, wouldn't you know that if it's a tree that's in the town's right of way and you're gonna treat it to try to save it, wouldn't would you notify the conservation commission or the You don't have to, you wouldn't you have to. to. Actually that the, the state law specifically mentions that and there's like that it should be in here. You're right because we're not allowed to. If somebody is demonstrating that they are like dealing with the pest on their own in a way that works or whatever. So you're suggesting adding language about. Um, yeah, just notifying the landowner of the of the action uh, right now. For if it's a, if it's an ash if it's, a, if it's an ash tree specifically. Yeah. But it should be okay. broader yeah, than that. Some Any, other boogeyman that can anything that they. An infested or infected tree that the landowner is treating. Dutch elm. Right, so the annual, they could hire tree works to come preserve this tree for hundreds of thousands of dollars. The town yeah. necessarily doesn't know. Yeah. Uh, Boy, you owe them for that. 
Yeah. 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 So you're saying so it's a ha it, it meets the definition of hazard, Correct. but the landowner is working to mitigate. Okay, got it. Did you have more? Uh, on that same page, number four, tree reward services. Um, and we're so fortunate to have you, Neil. Um, and it does say in the event that no qualified tree warden can be recruited, et cetera, et cetera. But what are the qualifications? Qualified tree warden. Where are you now? Oh, no. Page four. Oh, I see. Nine, paragraph nine. Yeah, I see it. I don't know, and I was trying to be specifically vague. This is one. Of, this is a paragraph that needs to be there by state statute, like saying, "Will we allow tree wardens from out of town?" Um, and my intent was just to say, like, we don't want to, but it's up to the select board. If the if there was if nobody wanted to be a tree warden, or if only one person did, but the select board felt like. They're just not well qualified or whatever. Yeah, it seems like the qualification would be maybe more important than the town the person's from. You know, it might be better to have a qualified tree warden right. in Montpelier mm -hmm. than to have some Joe Smo. Yeah. Or Jim Smokes, you know, from Cal stand up and say, I want to be the tree warden, but I don't necessarily. Have yeah. A so another qualified entity, not necessarily the town of Cal. Right. Right. And it allows that, but it kind of leaves it up to the select board to decide. If that's the case, do they? Does that, is that? I mean, I'm, does that involve me? And then who's paying for that at that point? I mean, uh, that yes. <coughs> I don't. Yeah. Good it's questions. Something. It's like something that we have to. Yeah. It would be the the select board could decide to hire somebody from mm -hmm. out of town, or somebody from or in service. town who's unwilling to do it without money or whatever. So actually, you know, I brought the statute with me for the yeah. tree preservation. Plans. Yep. And I have I, a copy too. Oh uh, well, you might. I don't see that this specific provision is required. Did I bring only a part of what I'm? Or are you working from a model? You might be working from a model. I'm not working from a model. Uh, okay. It's so it's. Um, this is what I'm looking at. Determine the apportionment of costs for tree warden services provided to other municipal corporations. Shall do, so what it says, what the statute says is the plan, the, the shade tree preservation plan shall, shall determine the apportionment of costs for tree warden services provided to other municipal corporations. I don't even know what that means. Like what, what is the town going to pay other towns to do their tree warden services for them? Um, the cost I, I think. So is the, <coughs> how much is Callus going to set aside to pay for tree warden services from other towns? What if we, so what yeah. if, what if this, this just said the select board may apportion costs for, for, for tree warden services provided to other. Determine the apportionment of costs for tree warden services provided to other municipal. What if you just repeated that paragraph, that line of the statute in all of its. The select board shall determine, blah, blah, blah. Yep, the apportionment of costs for tree warden services provided to other municipal corporations. Municipal corporations, full stop. So, until we figure out what it means. <laughs> well, and so does that mean that if East Mountain doesn't have a tree warden and they ask <clears throat> you to come and do some tree warden work, you have to ask the, the Callus Select Board whether you go, no, you go there? No, no, it, it's the, it's if Callus wants to use East Montpelier's tree warden. Mm -hmm. Um, I, well, so I did ask someone at the state about this, and this is how it was explained to me, is that like, if, if you, if there was nobody in Callis who could be a tree warden, and the select board wanted to get Paul Kate, the East Montpelier tree warden, to do it for us too, and he was like, yeah, I'll do it, and, you know, charge you for it, then, um... Do we not already I, have that authority? Right, you don't already have, so the, 
tree wardens used to have to be from, from the town. Mm. Um, you couldn't have a tree warden from out of town. That's one of the things the statute changed. Huh. That's um, good because now, you can't find people. Now you can, right, for that reason. But if you have a shade tree plan, it has to address this question of like, are you going to pay people from out of town and how much? And I was trying to punt and say, okay. like, we'll decide if we need to. And my other question on that piece is, what if you can't find anybody from any town to do it? Can we hire, or does the statute say, like, you can hire a tree service? I think so. You can just, hire anybody says, who's out of town. That, yeah. It says nothing. Neil made it say more than it's, yeah. the statute says. Provided to other municipal corporations. So that makes yeah, sense. That's I why mean, I was asking whether or not it, you could hire a do they mean tree like service. fire districts or something? It just says that, that, that last sentence. Like other municipal corporations? Where? Here. Like you could have a fire district within a town or a, a village within a township or a village. Or or village. Okay. I think a municipal corporation is just a town or, or city. Mm. So I noticed you only have 15 minutes left. Are you better? Okay. Do you see this affecting current use at all? No, um, it shouldn't affect current use because, I, I mean, there's always been these regulations on roadside trees and... They look more at forests or at fields, not yeah, individual trees. Right. I mean, you have to be managing an enrolled property, but... Um, I think it's okay to just not touch trees right along the road. Yeah, you could though. If you're doing a Norway spruce plantation and then went up to the roadside like Green Sharington, you yes. clear cut that. You won't be cutting every tree. And then yep. potentially ask for approval from the tree warden or That's a good point. But you it wouldn't jeopardize your current use enrollment to not cut a strip of trees on the road, right? No, no you jeopardize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Are there other people though? Yeah, any other? Do we have a deputy tree warden? Yeah, Drew Lamb is our Drew, deputy. Drew, right. yeah. um, So I have a couple of comments, um, mostly around the designation of shade trees, section three, number two. And I realize that you know, the intent of the preservation plan would have to start somewhere. Me personally, I'm not sure that a blanket approach to every tree on the entire right away in the town of Calus is the best approach. Um, you know, they were sort of protected before this was clarified, but they weren't really. I mean, it depends on which statute you read, which one you want to follow. Um, and doing it this way, to me, I don't know if it meets the needs of, of the town's sort of vision for this. And as a private property owner, it's a, we're taking private property from uh, citizens of the town by doing this, you know, if we enact this. It's not much, but it's the control of the vegetation that they sort of had before, and now they don't. Um, and I wonder if you looked into any other way to sort of solve this. I'm wondering if there's like a, sort of breaking it out sort of the way we have our development zones, and so maybe the villages and the, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. Have one set of rules in the rural or the financial areas have something else. Uh, I didn't know that, at least in your tenure as tree warden, how many trees are you really looking at? Is this really a problem that if, if we turn, if we don't do anything, are we going to have, you know, I can't imagine that there's that many people who are going to de vegetize their right of ways. Um, and so, you know, are we looking at 10 people over the last 10 years? Uh, are, we, are we creating a solution to a problem that doesn't really exist? Yeah, I, so we we did look at a bunch of different ways and tried to think of um, less like breaking up the town into zones and more along a stretch of road. What if we had, what if you had to leave a certain density of trees or um, kind of these more complicated ways of doing it? And, um, and we talked about also about kind of trees within a certain distance of the road being allowed to cut those, but um, I, 
it was kind of felt problematic no matter what we did. It was hard to apply, or it was you could find situations where people felt like uncomfortable that. So I think the approach was, yes, it's kind of a blanket thing. It doesn't stop people from cutting trees. It does obviously add a hindrance. It's like a pain in the butt to wait 15 days or whatever. But, it, but the feeling on the Conservation Commission, at least, was like it means that there's a conversation about them. So if there's that tree that somebody really loves and another person just finds it a hassle, well, at least there's a chance for people to have a conversation. Yeah. I think that's where we were going with it. You're going to very easily get stopped the process of cutting that tree by somebody that doesn't like cutting trees in the town appealing every time. Uh huh. Right? Theoretically. But I think, I think the, what led to a lot of the push in our town's been pushing this for know, at least 15 years is actually less about private folks wanting to cut a tree here and there. It was more about us and our road crew. Right. Yeah, coming in there and just decided they want to widen the road, that was an issue, and decided to well, get the trees down. Mm -hmm. And so in the case of Adamant, they went along with spray paint. Yeah. Yeah. And spray painted people's trees. Right. Can you imagine coming home and seeing yeah. all your trees spray painted and you find out not only your trees slated to be cut, but they're gonna widen the road in front of your house. Right. Right. And so it would to me, I remember this was more about a check on us. And it allowed the select board to check in with our road crew, forced them to check back with us. And there was a, quite a tug of war. Yeah, I remember that. It, that's, it's really about keeping municipal government in check. I, that's, that's been my understanding all along. And we, didn't, and we didn't create it out of thin air. It's actually started in 2020 changes to the statute, right? Our driving. Uh huh. Our driving. This. It's not something that you, you said, oh, we should really do this, and so here we are. Right, it's no, it's because of the state law. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that, um, state, that state law originally, as, as I understand it, you know, when Vermont was developed, they tried to replicate, you know, northern Europe and the, the roads with the, the tree, tree, shady tree lanes and before road salt and pavement, and the towns planted trees, or they worked with landowners, and they planted these trees. They were, it was a deliberate process. It wasn't whatever they grew up half past year protecting. I thought they were called ornamental shade trees, actually. They used to be. I thought there was a term ornamental in there. But there was, there was. They took it out and just kept the yeah. shade. Yeah. And, and so that, that, that's Keep where the change the was. Yeah. And um, that's a massive change, because it went from trees that were deliberately planted and maintained that we didn't want the lazy drunk in the middle of December to come out and cut a tree down because it's easier to fill the wood stove in 1890 um, with a town tree. But now we're, and I, I, I'm sensitive to what Dan is saying too, now we're looking at every single tree that's over six inches over as being having equivalent value to what was intentionally established as an ornamental shade tree. And I don't know how, I don't know what the solution is yeah. in terms of alternative language. Unless we went around every road and we designated with the agreement of the landowner, this is the ornamental and everything in between isn't. Um, yeah. One of, the, one, of, one of the alternatives is, and we were hinting at this earlier, this is new. You're, you're hearing some changes, so we're not, you know, not going to adopt it tonight. And you, we, when it's ready, we adopt it for a year, see how it goes. Mm -hmm. and the thought might be given, I'm just thinking aloud here, folks. Um, you can shut me up, Madam Chair. Um, but maybe if a landowner, like say Dan, said, Look, I know what was intended to be here, and I know what grew up in between, it looks like hell, and I'd like to be able to cut that, and I get some free time. Um, maybe there's a process that we add to this where, on a case by case, maybe if we'll notice that we can go up and down roads and decide what stays and what doesn't. Maybe that's too much to ask. I don't know. Well, I think Where we, we need to have like some hard definition of what's a shade tree. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to have trees that are not going to be shade, that are going to be cut without the notice, then it needs to be clear from the start that they're not shade trees. No, but I was saying, no, I agree. You have a general definition, but maybe in, in, 
road by road we could establish which trees are in fact the shade trees and everything that falls in between those particular trees maybe the landowner has a process they can is, is there a pursue way to, and then once they get that like kind yeah. of like their current I think current you could you could po you could post a warning that was like basically we're considering cutting all these trees along this road that are not marked with you know that are we're oh, not considering right. yeah. shade trees and yeah. then if nobody objected or if right. it was a hearing about it and the select board decided it was okay then you'd be kind of good to go yeah that's a lot of ifs for somebody that don't yeah 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 a lot of what dan that's, that's a lot of ifs for somebody for a landowner that wants to do that work now they can just go do it yeah um, and so i think well, basically you're putting the, the they can't. On those roadside trees on, ultimately on the select board to make those yeah I mean, they they can't, and they haven't been legally allowed to do it for a long time. But I think that it's just yeah. been kind yeah. of like under the radar. You know, a lot of people didn't even realize. I'm sure tons of people have cut roadside trees without having a hearing. Yeah, they don't even know they're supposed. They didn't to. even know they were supposed well, right. to. Well, right, nobody says anything. The statutes that were the problem. That's why we're here today, so we can clarify it, so we can get rid of it. Because when it actually really went to court for a property in Madison County, yeah. Which is fine, uh, but wait, who did the cutting? Uh, for a dairy farm in Madison. Oh, County. oh, I just remember those photos. <clears throat> yeah, it's become like a mile long yeah. oh, wow. Wow. Just like it, uh, it wasn't the most beautiful entry we've ever seen, but <laughs> but even still, once they assign a value to each stem, right, yeah. two inches in diameter, it right. totaled a lot of money. And we have to court, and then they fought over it, and nobody could decide the outcome. Look at this, because there was two opposing statutes. There was a highway statute that said. The town and highway the landowner can do whatever they want without anybody's opinion. And then there was the Paul Gillies interpretation of law of trees that said, we have basically yeah. what this is. Yeah. And without the six inch category, what we've been operating on in the past for a couple of years. But since we have that space, it makes sense to okay. have it yeah. appropriate for cows. And that's right. what I think we all support, is right. having that state statute interpreted for what our policies were. Right. And that makes sense. Do you want so we only have a couple more minutes. Do you um, want to continue and do another session? Sure. Do a re do a, maybe do a redraft? I could redraft. Re wants to set, submit ideas for language changes, improvements. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough nut to crack. I don't know what yeah. the best is, but right. it feels like now it's all or nothing. That's kind of where that's where we came to with the conservation commission was like, gosh, it's all or nothing, and I guess it should be all. But um, I'm I'm totally open to other ideas, yeah. you know. Well, uh, maybe the maybe you want to have a conservation commission meeting and talk about this and some of the we we have some, and so this is kind of the conservation commission's version, right? So like maybe you want to have a new version and run it by the conservation commission. Uh -huh. And one last thing, back in January when I first got this, I had made a note on page two, and I'm not sure what I was thinking at the time, about utility lines should also be considered so as to not interfere. I mean, we don't want utility line people coming in and just cutting. We don't, this doesn't affect them. They have their own set of statutes. Right. And we kind of can't. No, because I know they come to us. Yeah. When they're gonna do, you know, a bunch of cutting. Yeah. Um, they have to in some situations, right. but I think they also kind of, as a courtesy, even though they don't have to. WEC usually WEC does. does. Yeah. yeah. They usually let us know so that it's not like we get all these phone calls, oh my God, did you see all those trees cut? Yeah. yeah. You know, they can, they can do what they need to to make sure that trees don't fall on their power lines and, the, and storms and things like that. So it's kind of a... Yeah. So I don't know if anybody else has more comments. Richard? Yeah. Uh, what date, Neil, do you want to aim for to come back and do part two? We'll do it again at six o'clock? Um, sure. I guess if it's going to... Probably not till June, right? If we're going to do it at the conservation... If I uh, talk about it at the Conservation Commission, then... Um, I don't have my calendar with me. I think we uh, meet okay. again in another week or don't something. Don't you meet like the third Wednesday? So we meet... Yeah, July. Right. It's tentatively set for um, June 18th, which would not be the normal 
normally it's the first Wednesday in the month we try to meet. So okay, you're not doing one this, oh no, because the first Wednesday yeah, already passed. Yeah, Stephanie's already done. We meet, so, so the first meeting of the select board after June 18th is June 27th. Is June that, 27th. Does that feel too aggressive? Well, you can say. Well, if it doesn't work, you can always let us know. Yeah, why don't we plan on that? June, or we could just say July 11th, which gives you plenty of time. That's when we have our Town Highway 7 meeting. No, that's June 11th. That's June 11th. June, July, July 11th is a Monday oh, night. Oh, oh, July 11th. It's 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 plenty of time smart. between June Post 18th Black and July 11th. Let's plan on that. I'm not okay. totally confident that I'm here, but I think so. July 11th? July 11th. And, okay. um, and it'll be at we'll 6 p.m. We'll definitely get to the Conservation Commission. So that gives you plenty of time give me to plenty of work time. with them. Yep. Yep. And that gives you time to come up with a new draft. And if anyone else has any comments or whatever, I'd, you know, happy to listen to them. Ideas for language change, email me. Thanks, Neil. Yep. All right, a couple minutes for shuffling. Yeah, thanks, Neil. Um, let's call our regular meeting to order. Let's do that. Thanks, John. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is there any public comment on items not on the agenda? No, all the public left. Public left, okay. Uh, next is our consent agenda. There, Do you uh, want to mention the reports or something? Yeah. Being reviewed? Yeah, there's one, one change that I want to make on the consent agenda. I want to take off the minutes of April 25th because one of the edits that I was suggesting for whatever reason isn't here for me to kind of memorialize that's what we're approving and I feel like it's an important one. So I'm taking the April 25th meeting okay. minutes off the agenda. Is anybody, is everyone, anyone else got anything on? No. Okay, everyone else good on the agenda? Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Where, well, part one. My question is, I still didn't see the dog warrant. I put them in the folder. I looked just before I left at 5.30 and it wasn't in there. I did put them in there, but right right when you were emailing me. Um, we can, I, just, I just wanted to see it, that's all. Yep. Um, why don't we, okay, why don't we circle so back. John's looking everything up and he doesn't see it in the folder. Either. Maybe it's under there. I did look under there several times. Unlicensed dog letter. Yep. Is it? Word. Yep, that's it. Now hold on there. It's spinning. There we go. All right. I did I not? Okay. And then what's the next the other document? I printed it. it must usually there's a list of all the yep, people that are. Yep. That was in there too. That one. Hold on. We got that generic. Oh, you so yeah, you put it in at 5:33, which was right after I looked. Yeah, sorry, I just got you all that today. 5:34. Yeah. This is the authorization. Yep. Mm -hmm. He can grab people's dogs, and the Humane Society wasn't open when I went to look. They weren't open until. Do we want to? Morning. Do we want to pull that off and make sure that we've got a clear path forward? What do you mean? Well. I'm just asking the question. Well, this is standard language that we do every year. Um, do we know if, do you know, I told Travis and hooked him up with the woman at the Humane Society oh, some, a, while okay. ago, a while ago. Do you know if he's taken that course? The yeah, Animal thing? Control Officer course? Yeah, it's only like, it's like two hours or and something. And they offer it, the Humane Society? Yeah, and he has to take oh, it. I didn't know it was offered. Yeah, know. and oh, at okay. first he was a little, Hesitant, and I said we, okay. we got to take it. So, so, so rather than sidebarring, let's. Pull, I'll send them an email, right? Well, now. no, but I want to pull, pull it off. Pull your. We could pull it off, but also we could, or we could just document the, mo the points that you're making. That the dog warrant is something we do every year. It yeah. applies to land or dog owners who haven't yet, yet paid the licensing fee. Right. That it authorizes the uh, animal control officer to what's the word, seize, seize, seize the dog and coordinate impoundment with the, Central for us, Humane it's Society. Vermont. Yeah, they Vermont. Yeah, they have a process for drop off and stuff, but I still don't see the- Is there Central Vermont Humane Society the one also offers the class training? Right. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. And I put him in touch with 
that person whose name I can't remember, right now, several, what, a couple months ago, back when there was snow on the ground. But I just still don't see the list of all the delinquent dog people. Is it called an animal control officer or a humane officer? I think it's animal control. It's, they'll, when I contacted her, I, she knew what I was talking about. Okay. And confirmed with Travis that yes, he needed to take this. And I don't know if he ever did, so. Okay. Okay, why don't we, why don't we pull that off and do it on the 23rd. On the 23rd. Yeah. Um, and we're pulling off the April 25th minutes. Mm -hmm. And this is part one consent agenda. Is there anything else? Um, no, I have the signature page for the. Is there a motion to approve part one of the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, I have the. You um, have the thing? Yeah. Um, okay, Con consent around. agenda part two is separate because it relates to the Vermont Community Development Program grants for ECCTs, and Denise has I'm recusing, myself. recusing herself. So this is for Sharon, Rick, and John only. Is there an, am an amendment or an, a motion to approve uh, consent agenda part two? So moved. John, you want to second? second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Today is the ninth. Here, I'll pass this back to you. Rick is busy with the orders. Okay. Um, we can't do roads report because Alfred's not here yet. Is he coming? He's coming, right? He's coming. Okay. Um, I've already done him. Oh, well, I have to drop him off. The RV applicants aren't here yet. Oh, my goodness. Pass that to Rick to How about we skip down to appointing select board liaison to work with listers on 2023 property reappraisal? You guys good with moving on to that item that we have scheduled at 835? Mm -hmm. um, so this is the project that Jan Olson alerted us to. There's documents, I believe, in the folder, but mostly what I wanted to do tonight is, are you gonna take care of this? Yeah. Okay, is, um, it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, somewhat bigger than a bread box project. We haven't done it at least since I've been on the board. Probably about three years ago. The whole, like. Oh no, that's probably 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. That's when the one where they come in and they look at this is the whole, inside and outside. The whole shebang. It's a big deal. Um, and given the real estate market, it's likely, you know, most, most of the state's gonna be undergoing this process, so it's a, a bit of a competitive mm -hmm. sport to find somebody to do the work, et cetera. So what I would like to do is appoint somebody as liaison from the board to work with um, Jan and just kind of, of, or the listers generally, and understand, okay, what do we gotta do? What's our timeline? And then kind of take the lead for the board as on that project. So and can we appoint Mark, he's not here? <laughs> well, we could, we absolutely can appoint him, <laughs> report Mark, and even though he's not here. We can. Because I don't see him having a big. There's no rules, there's no rule that says we can't appoint Mark. Yeah, I and I did talk to him about it. I, um, I know he's busy, but I still feel like he's a really good candidate. Yeah. When yeah. I talked to Jan about it, because um, I asked her, would the state maybe be considering, you know, some kind of knowing that this has happened across the state, there's limited right. resources to do these appraisals, would the state, does she think the state might be considering making some extension. changes or some concessions? and Or an extension. An extension. And that's the word I'm looking for, an extension. Yeah. And she was going to check with... Um, Somebody at PVR, I think, to find PVR. out. PVR, and they just may not be there yet. I mean, right. this is kind of early in the process, and they, they might say no now, and then realize in six weeks or six months that they just don't have a whole lot of choice. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. anyways. Are you looking for a motion? I'm, unless, well, we could make a motion. Do you want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion mm -hmm. that we 
I'm sorry. I just before we yep. do that, do you want me to be a second in case he's trying? I think you got that? tons of road stuff. I do. I you do. I don't want to. Yeah, I know. We need backup. I'm feeling a little defensive of your time around yeah. road work. Yeah, I'd rather have see you and wrong Denise on wrong season. personnel with me on personnel I'm and just, just keeping sure all these power. balls in the air. Um, I don't mind being like backup to Mark. Yeah, but let's. I, I'm some of the stuff is going to get resolved. Yeah. So I could be backup. <laughs> Whatever you guys. I, just, just, I really like you. To, I like yeah. your road stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. Stay there. That sounds yeah. good. I'm Stay steady. Sure. Steady. Yeah. The that's that. We'll that's a, there's a long half the stuff on our you know things we're working on is is roads. So if you're, I would, I would. I would entertain and be happy about a motion that we appoint Mark, and if he needs a backup, then you know Denise has expressed some interest. But yeah, I just I have some history mm -hmm. with it, so I could help Mark. Mm -hmm. But but I want him to take. But you the lead. also I want have, him to take the lead. You and you also have a lot going on. Right, but it, I would push him to take the lead. I'm not going to take the lead on this. Okay, so is, so do you have a motion, Denise? Yes, I would move to appoint Mark as the. Primary lead to work with the Mark planning, Mahali. Mark Mahali, to be the primary liaison with the listers for the property reappraisal, and I would back him up as needed. I'll second that. And to me, it's not just lead with the liaison, uh, with, as liaison, but it's actually, like, to some extent, I think they're looking for the select board to drive this project. Yeah. To drive it? To drive it. Well, yeah. To, to well, to engage, to engage, to make the phone calls, to engage somebody. Maybe we have to do an RFP. Like, that's kind of all us as the contracting entity. Oh, I see. Okay. So it, it is, that's what I mean when I say it's kind of bigger than a bread well, I box. Think what, I think if I was doing it, I would ask to meet with the listers. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That would be the first step, is to meet with the listers, see, understand what's going on. Why? What are, what are the steps? I think what I'm saying is, would you be willing to win your motion to say, to be point person liaison to the select to the listers and the lead on behalf of the select board on this project. Yes. Okay. So at least we have a, an amended emotion, yes. an amended emotion, <laughs> all of those things. Wait, and wait, and lead. What was your wording? On behalf of the sl yes. select board on this 2023 Maybe. reappraisal project. Right. I mean that's kind of what. That's what we're talking about. This should what be a very standardized RFP mm -hmm. too, right? This is done all the time. Right. I mean, so well, it's not like we're real. Well, well, that's something that has to be found out, and that's what... The distinction that's in my mind, Denise, is there's like liaison to the Curtis Pond Dam, where they're kind of doing most of the work, whereas liaison here, we're doing. I think there's a lot of work we are going to do. and that, Probably, that needs to come back to the board for approval. And, right, but somebody on the board has got to do a lot of work, and right. so we're packaging not just the, you know, the point person to connect with... with the listers and wrap your head around what do we got to do, but also be the lead in actually doing it. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a motion, clear discussion. Somebody Some, did, somebody, second did somebody second it? I think it was seconded. I seconded. Yeah. yeah. All right, any other comments, discussion? No. Nope. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? I guess Mark's abstaining. <laughs> Absent. See what happens? Yeah. So okay. There's something else I thought of that we could do before. Alfred gets here. Oh, I know. Can under the agenda items from May twenty third. Yep. Under the curb cut piece, I think it would be helpful to ask the conservation commission to review our new curb cut um, application and approval form. What do you think? Did they Did you put the application out there? I haven't. Have I just I, not been seeing it? Maybe I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. Can you look? Yeah, I will look. Okay, um, so, and yeah. also, Rick, I need your, yes, I like that idea, so work with conservation mm -hmm. on curb cut, but also, Rick, I need your help for 20 minutes yeah. on some gaps in the application itself. Great, let's do it, yeah. What do you no, do? no, in the assessment tool. In the, well, I'm glad to. So Denise has redrafted an application to request a curb cut permit Mm -hmm. And I drafted an assessment tool for Alfred to use when he's reviewing a curb cut for recommendation to the board. Mm -hmm. And there's pieces where I just need your brain. Yeah, okay. I do. You tell me when. You I know. Do. There's the big question. You we'll find a time. Yeah, we'll I know you will. We'll find a time. Okay. And Denise, you're going to make sure. Yeah. There, you know that little curb cut folder that I made? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll double check. Um, that'll be good if we can get that one done. And then the other thing, well, the other thing that 
Absolutely. You guys can all see the things on May 23rd. This, I, have to, I haven't asked Janet yet if she can come that night. Um, the other thing is, oh, uh, the proposal for town hall cleaning that's all in our emails. Right. Yep, that's going to be next meeting. That shouldn't take long, though, right? Hopefully not. Um, okay, so why don't we just... Um, um, While we wait, we, we literally are waiting for company on all these rest of the items. Rick, do you want to do, let's just, I'm going to start with Rick and say, w besides everything on our agenda tonight, what else is going on? Anything you need to tell us about? I'll give you just a brief on everything. First, the grant, uh, the grants we're still waiting for to hear, or on the, uh, the for the, for the, um, the culvert and for the east callus there's the still we're still waiting you know with the bridge we're waiting to hear on the structures grant where they haven't been awarded yet so we'll that's the bridge that's broken right yeah. that and this is for the this would be for the temporary repair that so we're waiting applications in same thing we're still waiting to hear on the east montpelier stormwater project east callus. or east callus yeah. i'm sorry yeah. east montpelier, so I'm like, right. yeah that all the same we're waiting to hear on that and then we're also waiting to hear on on this uh, the, the kind of cover, culvert project right. too. So mm -hmm. the are they on CBRPC will get in touch with us as soon as they have that information. Mm -hmm. It's in their court. I keep touching bases to make sure because I know they're understaffed right now. So yeah. Mm -hmm. so well, Bonnie just said though that they hired somebody, right? They did, to, but it'll take a little while to come up to yeah, speed. Yeah, She's going to be doing it. That's it's not be a lot job. to come up to speed. Yeah. So we'll. You know, but that's, I talked to Bonnie last week, I think, so we'll, I'll keep just bumping that. Then, can I, can I talk to you a little bit about the signage pieces, you know, the electric sign that I found? I've done my own research so far. Is, isn't that the seven? Yeah, do we want to? It is, it is, but it makes sense. Do you want to tell us about um, the call I got on Lightning Ridge? Do you mean, which, which one? I'm sorry, on the video. The WEC right away, the cable. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I talked, yeah, we can talk about you, that. Can you give us background on the Yeah, the he's going There to. was, uh, apparently there is a fiber cable that's going across down Lightning Ridge, and it is a Velco working in the right-of-way for Washington Electric, and so I contacted, she got a contact from Ron Thompson, who has underground right away already across the road and he was angry because somebody came out there and flagged I, I don't want to say angry well he was concerned he was yeah, asking I questions saying, he was yeah, asking I questions. don't want to he dump angry on Ron he runs hardly ever angry yeah and that <laughs> and it was uh, he was concerned and um, they had flagged the land he didn't know anything about what's going on so I reached it he's he, a, and he's a property owner he is on Lightning Ridge and his daughter his daughter lives right across the street. It's actually on her land. So, you know, what happened, uh, I, Sharon, he contacted Sharon, Sharon contacted me. It's a select board liaison. liaison to transportation. So I followed up with, first I went right to Washington Electric and to get details. And he, you know, uh, he gave me, Brian gave me the information on I yeah, said so this is really Velco. He was going to be reaching out to Velco. I haven't heard back from him yet. But I contacted Jay McDonald, the project manager on that, and to find out what was going on. And he said, yeah, we are working in the right of way on that. And then he hadn't been very communing. I think he had gone and talked to Ron, but after the fact, a little bit. And I said, look, because he, apparently, there was a little confusion. This project started. It was started by Du Bois Construction, uh, you know, and then Phil Scott sold that to Jay McDonald. So there was kind of a switch in project management, and he thought a lot of this was done, according to him. And so, you know, they walked in there and, you know, marked everything up. So I told him, you know, talk to Ron, give him, you know, tell him, it's, it's obviously in the Washington right of way, Washington Electric right of way, and it's a utility cable. So it's, legitimate for them to put this in, but talk to the property owners and he agreed he's going to do that, you know, and you know, give them all detail, try to work with them to make sure it's located properly. 
And I call Ron too, and we Thank talk. You. Yes. Yeah, I followed up with him, obviously. So we, we closed had, that loop. Yeah, definitely. We had was a long, he, Was he okay now? Yeah, yeah, he was okay with Good. it. And so, and then, but then I made sure that Jay McDonald came, <laughs> get back to him. Yeah. Because I want to make sure that they, you know, get and really. So just it's all about be polite. This is about communication. Yeah, right. that's exactly what I said. So it, uh, yeah, he was good with that. And he thank me. Thank you for the follow up. Send him up with the right guy. That's all I did. Well, okay. Just, that's good. So thank you for the uh, yeah. Anything? So any? Um, we're going to have. I think. Just inquire. Where is this Velco line going? To, uh, is it just cutting through town? Is that the idea? I don't know where it is. It's going. It's. I'm not sure where it's there's going. There's no Velco transmission line in our town. It's not. There. But it's done through Velco. There. They're the one that are, that are handling the application. That's what Washington Electric. But it's for Washington Electric. But it's. It's in the Washington Electric right of way. Yeah. I don't it, know. It's, but it's I didn't know what the cable was. Yeah, it's I for. Well, isn't it for the fi ultimately? I think it's for the fiber project. Oh, it is. I think so. Uh, I, well, I don't know. I I, I made that okay. assumption. Oh, yeah, I found it. Found yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. Good to see you. Good. Yes. Uh, okay. Anything else that's we're not otherwise going to hit on? When Are you sure Alfred? Alfred's coming? I think he is. Well, he's not late. He's supposed to be here at seven twenty. And it's seven, only 7.22. So we're good. We're just running out here. That's, yeah, you never know. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Uh, right. Do we need so, Alfred for the Charlie Boy thing? Do we need Alfred for the Charlie Boy thing? Uh, I can talk about some of it. Yeah. I think the... Uh, Let's the, do that. The truck, yeah, I mean, as far as the trucks, um, we have gotten a chassis date. On, the, on a regular retirement truck, that's the, uh, you know, the dump truck. And I think it's in September, I can't give you the exact date, but it's September or something. Like and so now he's scheduling the dump body, the, uh, the actual body that has to be put on it. So we're, hopefully we can get that, you know, before winter hits. So I, I have a question. This is, we're talking about the surcharge. No, oh, yeah. We, when we yeah. ordered that, did we ever put money down? Is there a contract with a set price where we put money down? I and that they're trying to augment to add $5,700? I'm, sure I'm not sure if we put money down. Okay, if we didn't put money down, I guess. Well, I asked that question. You know, I, yeah, I, it just, I do get, I get there because of the supply chain issues now. No, I understand. That. I mean, it's I, a binding contract. I agree. I you know, supply chain issue. I mean, this is what contractors for houses they they right. bound themselves to a construction cost, and they're still obligated to. You said with their option is to, Yeah, I don't know if we have a down payment. Do on that. we have a sign contract? Do we sign a contract with them? Well, I just have to find out uh, how binding. He said that we had the option of backing it. No, no, which no. I no, no that's that's easy. Of course we do. Yeah, um, I, but I, if, in terms of, we have the option of backing up, if there's an established contract and agreed can. upon price, right. can you find that out? And if there is, we want to run it past our attorney, because I don't know if they have the latitude to yeah. do what they're doing. If you have a contracted agreement, agreed upon amount, and there's no I, out clause for them, it's generous of them to back us out if there's a contract. I don't know if there is. It might have been just a handshake, and we got an order list, and that's that. Yeah. But yeah. if there's a contract, or under Vermont contract law, they're bound, to obligated to meet that agreed upon price. Right. Good point. You know, I always hear in Vermont, a handshake's a contract. I don't know if that's true. You're, you're an attorney. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, find, I'll get that answer. Okay. And then, uh, so it's first, if there's a contract, I, is it, it signed or not? And then we want to see the paperwork that was pro sent in to, um, who is it? Who are you from? Sure. No, no, it was the company. Daimler. The, uh, the, oh, the truck? Yeah. It's uh, Western Star. So Western Star. So we want to see the paperwork for that. So if the event, in the event there is actually an established con contractual arrangement where they made a commitment on their end, we so, made a commitment on ours, so a binding contract, so, we want to run that past our attorneys. Okay, and so May 23rd. Um, John, did you just make a motion to authorize Rick to reach out to Joe McLean as necessary to process the said contract? If there's a contract. 
if there is if yes. if there is a contract. So we're going to have yes. to know from Alfred if there. Yes, uh, you want a motion? Yeah, you just yes. Agree. That's a motion. Okay. For a second. Second. Okay. Can you tell me what that was again? The motion. The motion is, um, well, well prior the lead into the motion is. Rick finding out whether or not there is an established binding contract of whatever shape or form. If so, the motion is um, to run that contractual language past our council, the town's council. Mm -hmm. um, okay. What's his that's name? Joe McClain. Joe McClain. Joe, McClain. That's it. Joe, sorry. Joe, Joe. Joseph M C L E A N. Yeah. And uh, to see whether they're they're they have the latitude okay. to assess us a surcharge. And I seconded it. You went to vote. Any other discussion? No. All good. in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, I'll do that. Do you, also, uh, other truck, the- uh, Wait a minute, before we okay. move on to, so I have, I just made a note that we're gonna revisit the surcharge on May 23rd. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, because I would imagine that this is time, time some time of, is of the essence here. Okay, keep going. For May 23rd, okay. And then you uh, want to talk about the... The Ford. I want to talk about the... the this is the F600? Well, it's for an F600, yeah. <coughs> in general, the GM that we have has turned out to be a real lemon. Remember, we authorized purchase, but we couldn't get... And he... You couldn't, he couldn't order... Ford is not taking orders for this class of dump truck right now for the foreseeable this is for the This is for the for truck his, that The we truck use. he drives is the smaller dump truck. That we use on the county roads. Right, he's going to replace it with an F600. Whoa, 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 we didn't approve that yet. Yes, we did. We approved it last winter. Remember, you you moved it. To we replace, replace it. it? Yes, yeah, yeah, it was in, it's in the meeting. You, you Boy, moved it. Yeah. I'm losing my brain. What what were the defects? I know we, it's had, been, it's I know been we had a, a connector issue that they, it was just a backlog, like so many things. It's but been an issue after, after it's cool been an issue after issue. issue. Oh, but there have been a number of issues. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it's been a real lemon. So it's so we're dumping good money after bad in that. So um, that sounds familiar, actually. Yeah, it yeah. Does. and we voted. Yeah, you moved that one, John. Okay. So anyway, the status is that we were able. Alfred was able to find a town that I mean, one of the towns backed out on one of their orders, and we were able to pick that up. So he's trying to get a delivery date on that. Hopefully, it's not. So that was an already established order. So an F600 isn't a Ford? It is a Ford. Oh, We're getting, okay. we'd, be, we'd be replacing that General Motors with an F600. Yes, but it's used? No, it'd be new. It would okay. be a new truck. So it would be, yeah. And so, but we don't have any dates yet. He's reached out trying to get the dates on that. And he, may be, he may have more information when he gets in here. And the one we're replacing is a GM? These general motors, yeah, Jamie too. It's been a problem since the beginning. So, yeah. Yeah, it's not always. It's only two Do we know what the price is? No, I don't. I don't have any cost of the price information. So shouldn't we and I don't have a delivery date. I'm just giving you an update. What I know so far, we, he gave me that information, I think, on Thursday. Right. So, it would be interesting to know, based on the prior conversation, has he signed any paperwork on that? Uh, he's just taken the order. He's not signed a, a purchase and sale. Right, purchase and sale. But I think we've, we've taken the slide. I asked him that. He said that we, well, based on the conversation we just had, it would be good to have him to know if there's some paperwork that he's signed so that. Mm -hmm. We should probably, it may be worth. You know, getting a copy of this for the, in the future on all these trucks yep. at every stage, just so we've got it in our record. Well, yeah, I would think we'd want to. Yeah, the, I, I'm not. Yeah, I don't know. I I didn't ask this question because I assume this is kind of a regular routine protocol that we go through. So I'm not sure what he, you know, how this is done yet. So. And yeah. I mean, we don't even have a price, so. We don't yet. So, but he's trying to get that, and he's trying to get a delivery date. So, if it's not, if it, you never know, if Ford, if he's, uh, if Ford's not taking more orders, you know, is, it, is that locked in or not locked in? You know, we don't, I told him, find out, this does us no good. 
if we have to wait two years for this truck. Yeah. Okay. So that's not, you know, not going to fly. Anyway. And that's a one ton, right? No, that's more than one ton. That's at least a ton and a half. I get, I get that one mixed up with the pickup. It is a pickup. Well, it's like a, it's right, a but I'm talking about the pickup that you, they drive around town. Well, it's a dump body. That it's more, it's a large pickup, but it's right. I know, call it so pickup too. Yeah, by comparison to your <laughs> right. Western stars, yeah, yeah. So I'm so this is just you're giving us an update. There's nothing that we it's need just to update. do or need to anticipate. No, it's we're still waiting for information. But I wanted to give you. That, the good news was that we actually found one because he's been, we haven't been able to find one because it's, it's all supply chain. There's yeah. serious, serious issues right. with that. We probably would want to shift to speed carts and permanent electrics, electronic speed alerts, unless, yeah, we, can unless we want to just table this entirely. No, can we, we be can, productive on this? I can be productive. I can give you information. We asked for last time. Let me do it. Okay. I went, yeah, so, uh, let me get to my page. Uh, you'd ask first, you know, where we had them, and what we had, you know, we had the one on the county road, uh, or there was one, one at Maple Corner, a speed, a speed sign. Okay. These are signs. Those, those, are, are, those, those are so. These are the. the these ones. are fixed, so speed. Well, fixed. They're, they're, it can be moved. These, but it's pole mounted signs. The one that is coming down the hill northbound. Okay, Maple so Corner. let's call it semi fixed, because you know yeah. how I need to break this down in the middle. Okay. Well, it's it's it's, well, to a, me it's, it's mobile. It's a mobile unit. But it's not on wheels. But it's not a car. Right. right. Yeah. So, so how? I, so I give give me a term that we can so we all can we speak in the same way. Just say pole mounted movable. That's what you can say. Pole mounted movable. To me, you, they're to me they're pole mounted, or it's a speed cart. The speed right. cart to me has wheels. It does. Okay. So this is a pole mounted speed signs. Okay. Yeah. Keep right. going. And you can say per not movable. Okay, because there's there's some that are permanent. Potentially. Well, I know, but we know that our ones in Cal so far are, are movable. Are all yeah, movable. Looks, okay. Yeah, okay. And so we have one, we have them where? County Road? Yeah, we've got one on County Road, and we've got two on Route 14, one one from the north side of East Cal's Village, and one on the south side, where you enter the village, as should be. Okay. And then we, um, and one of those is actually having a problem right now. And Toby's trying to get that fixed. Which one? I'm not sure. It's one of the two East Calais signs. The one coming into East Calais seems to work. Coming in which direction? From, oh gosh, don't ask me. That. Going, if you're coming from East Montpelier, is that north? Yes. Yeah. Going north. Okay. <laughs> the one in East, that one coming into East Calais Village. Seems to not work on a regular basis. So it's not yeah, they're sad. having issues, and they're they're trying to get that fixed. Yeah, their work. Toby's working on that. So, okay. Okay. That's that's an an internal deal. defect kind of thing. No, I don't know. I don't know anything. I just know it's, yeah. they're having issues with it. Okay, so, so that's three. Is that what we have? Is three of no, those? No, then we have one speed cart. That's the one. That three we, wait. Three pole mounted. Right. right. And then one speed cart, two speed carts. One speed cart, but the speed market part cart. cart is very old. It's it? it's joined, it's joined owned with what who was it with uh, Marshfield. Marshfield, Marshfield and yeah. Pla and uh, Plainfield too. I think, right. right and and though he said that they rarely take it, but the, but it's I it's near we, death's door. That, but I think that we have it now, right? Yeah, he said we've almost always it's, had it. Right, it's, it's, in, the, it's in the garage, but it's old. I it's like 25 or 30 years old. He said it's right. been there as long as he has, and it's getting really yeah. tired. So that's something, if we get a mobile unit like that, we, well, we can, I've asked for prices on those. I haven't, haven't gotten them yet. But that's, a, we can get one that's mobile. But I've done a bunch of other research on this, because you've got mobile pole sign. I, I mean, I think we ought to use smaller pole mounted units. If we get a mobile unit, we use it more. If we've got, if we're doing road construction work or clearing or something like that, where we need almost a speed reduction, or let's say at the, at the bridge, you know, while there's temporary construction, it can be used to reduce. And those are the, you're talking, now you're talking about the pole mounted ones. No, I'm talking, talking about, about the cars. You're talking, you're talking very, about if you're moving it a lot. The speed car with wheels. Yeah. He's saying not the speed. I heard a transition to if we were to buy another one, or or conceptually those are 
good for projects? This yeah. being part. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I think you know with the port, you have the whole modern portable, and you've kind of got them in two categories. You've got AC power where you've got electric available, and then you've got solar. Right. And then you've got just straight battery. Battery aren't ideal because you have to change the batteries every two weeks. You've got to go and recharge. Right. And that's why we got the solar. That's right. That's the way to go. And I think, and they have whole mounted units. I've been researching that are that I think we sh you know we should look at. I mean we can. I think so. I've looked at several manufacturers. I found one that is they're very good. They're really right units, and they go a little farther than just. I mean we can. They'll actually. Is they'll actually retrieve the, and store the traffic movement data. Mm -hmm. So we'll know mm -hmm. how many cars are going at what speed, and we'll know when it's happening, you know, time of day. It's date stamp, a lot like a traffic counter. Mm -hmm. So it would give us a much bigger, better picture than traffic counters, because it'll capture it over time. Mm -hmm. And it downloads, I think you have to pay an extra 300 bucks for the software. And then you just, it's, uh, Bluetooth enabled, you can just pick it right up off of, hmm. with the password for that sign, you just pick the data right up onto your, cool. onto a phone. So this could be really helpful for us in terms of, that's valuable data for us. Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking County Road data. I went County, well that's where, Lightning Ridge. yeah, at Lightning Ridge, and this is where, what I was, these, the pole mounted, anything pole mounted in the clear zone, it has to be on a road. It has to be on a breakaway. Right, that's what we learned. Okay. And that's, that's standard. Right. And usually there's a receiver in the ground and the pole basically drops into it right. and it's got a bolt in it. And that'll shear if it gets hit. Right. It's kind of nice because those things allow you, you can, you can set a base in there in a number of locations. And actually just move the whole pole, take pole and sign. And it sticks up enough that it doesn't fill up with dirt. No, you can just make a plug for it or oh. cap and just oh, yeah, good. And you can yeah. put a reflector on it whenever you want to do okay. the market. And then, but the main yeah, thing yeah. is there then you tend, I mean, there's to, there, you tend to take, you put these in certain places, it's like doing a, a traffic count. You don't put them in a curve, you don't put them near an intersection, you try to not put it within so many hundred feet of a driveway because you end up getting inaccurate data. Mm -hmm. So I think if we, you know, we could conceivably put receivers around on whatever roads we decide and then move them periodically. Yeah. Now the Lightning Ridge, I think, that's been such a problem spot. I think we actually kind of ought to have something more permanent in there because that's a long, straight road. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a wide. school, yeah. you've know, got a school involved with this, and it's wide. It's, it's, a, it's well, a race track. And you remember when we were doing these other signs, I asked the school to help pay for one of the signs, and the superintendent at the time said no. They'll probably blow us off, I'm sure. I'm sure they will do it again. I mean, it was, you know, it's like it's the safety of the kids, too. Yeah, I doubt that. I don't even think we bother yeah, with that. Yeah, they don't even start getting their return calls these days. So. Right. <laughs> Consolidation. No, um, yeah, the, um, um, yeah, but so, I mean, I think that, that, that certainly Lightning Ridge is candidate for two or, I'd say a few of those. I mean, generally, in my work in the past with the speeds, the speed signs like this, we would move them around and there's actually a there's kind of a residual period after you position one for say two weeks at a location and then it it has this residual effect for you know like three months after people remember once you get in the habit of seeing it you'll all right you'll start slowing down at a certain point and then you it establishes habit so it takes a while for that to loop you know to kind of go yeah. back to normal and so you that's the theory of kind of moving them around. Just with one side, you can get a lot of bang. Which we should, this takes work. We, should, we use the term on this, the agenda is lightning ridge traffic calming. I mean, mm -hmm. I always envision, well, I see these signs are about slowing traffic, but I always think of traffic calming as actually incorporating that in the road design. Well, that's both. Either yeah, the traffic calming. Or, it, it you keeps, know, plantings or, yeah, there are a lot of things you do. I mean, that when you, 
people driving, you're making over 100 decisions a second in driving on a rural road with nothing going on. That's Depends how many beers I've had. Yeah, well. I usually try to get it down about 10 a second. Well, that's why your brain, what it does, it's processing a lot. So it turns things into white noise. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and signs turn into white noise. It's why you yeah. don't put too much sign. It's why with the lime green school signs, they only allow them in certain situations, certain places. So it, when you see one, you know kids and people are in the yeah, street and yeah. they're in school. Yeah, they stand out more. Too. Right. And so you, the, these flashing signs do, do a couple things. You know, they bring you back onto, into attention. They bring mm -hmm. you on task. Because human yep. minds don't they stay wake up. Yeah. They do. You go into Tala Land very quickly. Yeah. All this stuff that's getting processed is pushing everything out that it doesn't need. And so those, they get your attention and they're very, very effective. Yeah. So, you know, the question is you can't put them everywhere. So you, you know, what we do, I think we pick our Lightning Ridge as a candidate for one, particularly in that section, I think between Tucker and, you know, near. The top of the hill. That's right. Yeah, because that, you're kind of coming down that hill, mm -hmm. it's very deep, tough to, it's easy to accelerate on downhills and it's very hard to decelerate, mm -hmm. but that kind of gives a, a long warning for people, you've got a long run before you start mm -hmm. getting into the big hill there at Lilies, you know, which mm -hmm. is a real speed, it's a real race track, mm -hmm. you know, it gets you, it'll bring them on task, yeah. attention yeah. will be on it. Up at Doug's place, it actually, his cedar, Cedar edge. So do you think maybe we should thing. put the flasher on the upper stretch of the hill and then have another speed sign as a wake up reminder? Or is that overkill? I Just a regular overkill. Kill I, think, sign? I think, I mean, we could watch it and we could actually, I'd say we start with one on there and we put a couple of receivers in and we can watch, especially if we get one where we can track some day movement data. Can we move it from? Yeah, yeah, you can. That's all the whole point. How much is this thing? Well, the ones I think I'm still waiting for the prices. They're about four grand for those. Four grand for that. Well, these are really they're good ones, and they're, these are the ones that I thought they were. I thought we paid like seventy five hundred uh, no, ones. Well, I think they're about four. This yeah, one, that's great. The they come down already, somewhere as low two, as two. Two, two thousand and something. Oh, that's, that's what I remember yeah. too. But yeah. those are your really basic oh. signs, and they're not as well made. Yeah, these okay. are these are pretty rugged, and they should have at least a at least a 10 year battery life on them. And you can have them read. And they got a panel on them. To they charge. have a solar panel. Yeah. yeah, and it's a high impact, you know, it's a top. They're a little harder to move because they're, you got a solar panel, which can be rotated. Mm -hmm. It's on the, and then your yeah. sign below it. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's where, um, you know, that's, but the, the main thing is that we can actually see the traffic behavior, which is really valuable. To us, yeah. So, yeah, I think if you know we can at that cost. I mean, I, I would think Lightning Ridge, certainly County Road in places. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've kind of got that north. I know people really fly up north of Maple Corner on the gravel road sections. Yes, it's they do. Very, it's also very rural, so we have to. The thing with the you know traffic behavior on the roads. The reason you you always hear me talk about the 85th percentile road, rule, which is what they base base speed on, a uh, speed limit, and that yeah, it, essentially the drivers are making all these decisions every second, and they're taking in all of this view shed, and they're look they're looking at the road, they're looking at intersections, they're looking at blind spots, and. You will drive the speed that you think your body subconsciously determines what its reaction time is to be able to react if something unexpected happens within that view shed. Mm -hmm. So the more open it is, and the straighter and flatter, the faster you will drive. So the 850 percentile rule, they take 100 drivers radar, nine consecutive drivers, like so they're not platoon driving together, and they do it at a non-rush hour time in crime conditions, usually mid-afternoon, and they, they'll take those speed, whatever that 85th, you know, they go fastest to slowest, and whatever that 85th driver 
is driving. That's actually the safe driving standard for the safe, safe driving speed for that road. And that is an internationally accepted standard. It's very See, the problem is it might be safe for the driver, but it's not safe for the pedestrian. Well, it might be safe for the driver. Right. It might not be safe for the bicyclist. Remember, this is a rule. This is a basic rule. You're absolutely yeah, I know, right. I know. And there's I've, also I've never power. agreed with this ever. I agree. And there yeah. are a lot. Listen to this. I mean, there's there are a lot of problems. What you see and what you don't see are two different things. And one of the things that drivers don't see is pedestrians. I mean, you can take bicyclist. downtown Bristol. Right at the stop sign in the middle of downtown, it was one of the highest, it was one of VTrans's top 50 accidents. There were several people killed in those cross rocks, walks right in the middle of town. You know, and you, the, to fight that, what they did is they put bulb outs in, which constricted the width of that yeah, road. That works great. Because the road's so wide, because they had yeah. herringbone parking. On they, what sides. did they put in? They put in what they call bulb outs, which are Cultures. They uh, basically widen out the sidewalk right there, there uh, and they take you right to the edge of the traveled way. And what it does, it not only makes the pedestrians visible to the cars, because they're not behind bar cars, right. but more importantly too, is it, it takes the visible road, which is this wide, mm -hmm. and it constricts it down to this, and that slows you down. Well, and we did and your way of travel is still the same, but it freaks you out because it... Yeah. Kind of like what they did in Danville. What they did was... We, we yeah. narrowed the road between Cornwall and Middlebury. We, then we had 12 foot wide travel lanes. So the travel lane was 24 feet wide. And we added up some bike shoulder in that several mile stretch. We knocked one foot off of the travel way to take it to 11 feet and it lowered the we took traffic counts on it and lowered the speed limit, the average speed by like 15 miles per hour. Wow. Hey, Rick, you got, so we got two minutes left on okay. this. Okay. So, so, so I have a question. Yeah. I mean, what is your, is your proposal? I mean, we've got to make sure we got money in the budget. Right. Let me I'm first get cost together. I'm yeah, still what I'm, to okay, so what I'm hearing is there's no proposal on the table right Not now. Not yet. Okay. So I'm still in information on that. But we'll have some choices okay. to make. We'll have cheaper options. And we did some might be more a little more expensive if we get something that's got traffic counting at some okay. some basic and if, speed. And if somebody who's watching the movie or is here has a question, they can just give you a call and yeah. they'll talk yeah. more you about can, it. Or forward it to me. Did you, Candy? Did you have a question? I just wondered what the purpose was. Like, I know that we're trying to slow traffic down, but what are we doing with the data? Are we going to have a higher sheriff to? If we find that in a certain section that it's Maybe speeders proving, a lot. Proving to ourselves what problem we do have or don't have. Noting yeah. times of day issues, so maybe there would be a reason to put, a, you know, put somebody there at a certain time of day. Maybe yeah. narrow the road. A big yeah. road. Yeah. The yeah. thing that we found, you know, people will, they'll see one car speeding and they'll say everybody's speeding. And so I would go out and put traffic counters out on my roads and we'd find one or two cars speeding and everybody else was below. There's okay. a, sometimes you found problems too, so we want to know that. Rick, do you have a date you want to come back? Yeah. Let's what do the there? next one. Are you sure? No, I'm going to shoot it. I should have it right now. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, and it's going to be for movable, movable speed. So are we looking to put this on the 23rd? Well, I'm going to come back with you with price information, all the information I can gather. Uh, so, and then so I'm going to suggest that yeah. maybe we bump it out to meetings so that you can actually crystallize not just price, but here's a formal proposal. You've had a chance to look at the budget, make sure it fits, all that kind of stuff. We For think June. Well, do we? Where do we want to take yeah. this? 13th. Something like that. Yeah. So June, the first meeting in June. Because I guess I would want, I mean, I'm in favor of doing something, but I also want to know how many are we talking? What's the real price? Can and we even get them with the supply chain right. issues? And does it fit in the budget? And does it fit in the budget? I think we can get them. Right. I mean, I asked about it. So that's the, this right. June 13th. Okay. So I'm going to work on seeing about getting us, um, uh, you know, kind of where, where are we at? 
budget update. If we can find, well, that's, I mean, I what I have to see is where we can, do you want these to come out of the transportation budget somewhere? Well, yeah, yeah. Or where do we, yeah. That's great. Thank you. What do we? <laughs> I mean, that's where they should come out. You can't take them yeah. out of your, your sign budget, the retro, we have a sign budget? No, but we might have to, we might go over in the sign budget, but in Under the somewhere end, else. it might. I think you can, I mean, the, the point is to look at what is, what is in the budget, yeah, where, where, where do we have some possibilities? Where do we have some possibilities? Yeah. Okay. okay, I want to turn now to Willa. We'll start with you. We have Hi, Willa. Hello. Uh, welcome. Nice Come on up and join us in this little hot seat here. Welcome to Callas. I am uh, going to invite the board to introduce themselves to you, and then we will ask you to introduce yourself to us. Um, and we'll ask you some questions about your interest in the DRB. Between you and Candy, who's here um, as an applicant for an alternate, as a, a, for an applicant to be a member, but as an alternate seat, we have 15 minutes allotted. Okay. Uh, yeah, 15 minutes for this item. So don't be upset if you see me sure. trying to kind of just move us along. But John, uh, John, I'll start with you for introductions. John. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, John Freeman, Cal Select Board. I live up on Adam and um, Singleton Road. Mm -hmm. Uh Sharon Wynn Fannin, sometimes we call it South Cal's. Mm -hmm. uh, Ray Kane the from Adam. Uh, and go ahead, Willa. Um, I'm Willa Farrell, and I moved to Cal's um, 18 months ago from Walden. Um, and I live on Wheeler Road. Where is that? It's a couple miles south of Maple Corner. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Austin County Road. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So tell us, tell us about what interests you about the DRB, why you're, why, you know, why, why are you here, yeah. and then um, we have questions that we'll ask you. Okay. Um, well, uh, I, I've been here a little while now, and I'd like to get involved in the community. So I saw on the front porch forum um, that you were looking for um, a member of the DRB. When I lived in Elmore some more than 20 years ago, I was on the planning commission and I enjoyed that um, opportunity. Um, and I, so I'm interested. Um, I'd like to serve the community. This is a way to do it, it seems. Um, and uh, I think I can be measured, and I, we, I spoke with Anne um, about her overview. I've been reading, um, I haven't gotten all through the town plan, but I've been reading the zoning regulations and the um, DRB's conflict of interest and procedural document, so trying to get a little familiar with it, um, the process. Um, and I think I could, you know, I think I could contribute um, to the meetings. And, um, bring my perspective and, and join join the group and contribute. Great, thank you. Any questions? Um, I mean, you answered a lot of the questions that we normally ask. Um, are you familiar with a quasi judicial process and what that means? Um, only, I mean, I've not experienced or been part of a quasi judicial process. Mm -hmm. um, I do work. Um, in the legal context, I work with court diversion and pretrial service programs out of the Attorney General's office, so I'm surrounded by a lot of attorneys and um, office members with Melanie. Um, oh, okay. So I, um, you know, I have a sense of how the judicial process is okay. with, um, I've served on boards before and you know, been part of some processes where you decide to be in executive session or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that answers most of the mm -hmm. questions. You've already been familiarizing yourself with the regs and the town yes. plan. Yeah. And you know what the DRV's role is. Yes. Um, and a question we always ask is, you know, this is callous and right. the DRB is looking at projects of all of our neighbors, yes. and sometimes it can be really, it can be really hard to make a decision. Mm -hmm. You want to, you know, you want to make a decision that allows the development because, mm -hmm. you know, we want to encourage people to move into town, yeah. but at the same time you have to follow the regs. Right. So sometimes that can be hard to do. Yeah. So how would you 
how would you feel if you had to do that? Well, and I, the first document I picked up was the rules of procedures and the conflict of interest. And um, I thought, well, actually, it's a good place to start because I could imagine that, that um, they're hard decisions sometimes. Um, I always think it's important to remember that conflicts of interest are um, perceived are as significant and as important as actual conflicts of interest. Um, so I think finding, you know, I think people need to be prepared to recuse themselves, name their conflict if there is one, and decide whether it's appropriate or not to recuse. Mm -hmm. And then I think um, putting conflicts of interest aside, um, there's going to be differences of opinion um, from the nature of what may come before the DRB, and so I think it's it's trying to be moderate and trying to understand pe where people are coming from here. I think it's really important that pe people feel that the process is, whatever the quasi or judicial process is, that people feel that the process is fair, that they're heard, they're mm -hmm. respected, um, that they understand the reasons a decision is made. So I would, I think all of those factors can help when there is a conflict and disagreement. And yeah. I guess my question wasn't so much the conflict of interest piece. It would be about making the decision that might affect. of your neighbor yeah. that they don't, you know, it isn't the decision they want. Right. And I, to me, then it would be explain, being clear about how and why the decision was made, and being prepared that not ever, that no one, that you will never please everyone. There will always be, and it might be your friend or your neighbor who will disagree right. with your decision. But that's why it's important to base it on the regs. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, yeah. So if I might follow yeah. up. Yeah, no, go ahead. Um, just kind of broadening on Denise's original question. Um, so the Development Review Board, the DRB, applies our zoning standards. Mm -hmm. And our zoning standards have, very, have some standards that are hard numbers. Yeah. There's no room for variance. Yes. And then, of course, because there's a DRB, there obviously are areas where there's range of discretion. Mm -hmm. So I guess kind of along the same bottom, um, along the same lines, if there's an application mm -hmm. that's before you and you apply a range of discretion, but the range of discretion is so broad as to allow what's being proposed in the application to move forward. And would you have a problem saying no? It's easy. We, I know everyone can say yes. I can do that every day. Yeah. But would you have a problem saying no? And if that resulted in someone's project being denied? No, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't have a problem saying no. Okay. To me, it's, it would be either the clarity of the regs mm -hmm. or if it's not clear, because there's sometimes nuances, it would be um, trying to come to agreement with the board. Mm -hmm. If I didn't agree with others, I would name that. And I don't, um, uh, I, I would just say, I don't have a problem saying no to people. And, so, and sometimes no means just what is presented yes. to no. Please come back with a revised application. Yeah. I know that, uh, be careful I say this, sometimes folks on DRVs attempt to be helpful. Mm -hmm. So there's an application that says, five areas that they proposed it on a project, and it doesn't fit. It's that square peg in a round hole kind of thing. Um, so DRB members might feel inclined to be assistive beyond what their role and res roles and responsibilities are. I basically rewrite the application in front of the board, at the board meeting, rather than saying, this is denied, go back, these are the parameters, take a second look at them and yeah. try to come back with a project that fits these parameters yeah. and then we'll review it anew. So I, I think that's my opinion, really yeah, important that you don't become their engineer yeah. and architect and designer, right. that your a review body reviews the facts set in front of you in deciding whether it comports or not with yeah. the zone regs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, do what I yeah, promised to do, which is on. keep us moving. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, Willa. Thank you. Is there really yeah, any questions? Yeah. Willa, well, thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Candy.
hear all of our introductions? Oh, Do we want us to introduce ourselves? <laughs> Why don't we let Rick take the lead in asking yeah. Candy the questions? But can I share your sheet with him? You already know all the questions. Right, so you I do. Well, why don't you start by telling us what you're interested in, what, what, what brings you here, and where does your interest from BRB come from? So it was, and you know, I was at Rancher Select Board last time, well, I guess two, two, two times. And because I want to get more involved in the, in the town, you know, coming to a few Select Board meetings every now and again, or hearing things just doesn't really involve me enough, right? So um, I think this is good stuff into it. Um, and the other reason is because I think it's, I didn't really know much about it before. And I, you know, I've read about it, I've heard about it. We've had to do zoning since we moved in 30 years ago. And it was on a piece of paper. Battery on the Right, with a pencil and just draw out our driveway and stuff. So it's very different now. Mm -hmm. um, so I spoke with Anne, she was just talking about the process, talking about um, what I really liked what she said was they don't like to just say no to people because we like to build up our community. So, um, and I was reading the one about the, the architect that they're trying to subdivide, right? Four lots or something's happening right now. Yeah. And um, they did deny it, but they said, these are the reasons and come back. So they came back, they were challenged, and it's ongoing now, but I just felt like, I like that we are willing to work with our town people instead of just saying, no, we're not gonna do this. So that's really what I like about it. Um, and then, I don't know, after that, let's see what it is. I like to be, I like to be prepared, um, and I think it's a good step in to see if I want to be on the, really want to be on that select board seat or not, and run for it a little bit harder than I did last time. <laughs> Get to know poor people in the community, which could be, that like could you be were good. saying, you may have upset some people, but, um, you know, having served on the Washington County Diversion Board, um, you do get to know your neighbors, you're not always in a, on friendly terms, and you have to do some hard things and make some hard decisions. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, you follow the process and you really try and let people know that you're doing it for the, the right reasons, you're following the law or the guidelines, and um, you're looking out for everyone's best interests. Yeah, it's yep. a good training. That was fun, but yeah. yeah. Well, let's see, whether you covered some of this. Yeah, do you, do you know what the DRB's role is? I mean, I do. Yeah, and speaking of, we had a nice conversation actually, um, and she's fully enjoying retirement, by the way. She said she's a pro at it. Um, but yes, she had explained too that um, looking at so the zonings, and if there's a question about it, and John goes out and it's something that he's not comfortable with or he's not denied, it goes go in front of them, they can look at it. There's a hearing, so everything is. You know, you're sworn in, you go through that process and you look at appeals and yeah, yeah. And reading up on it. I don't have it all memorized yet. Yeah. Uh, oh, come she on. said I would. <laughs> so you're kind of familiar with the regs then, the catalyst yeah. setting, right? I'm not a pro, but. But you're familiar with Eric Blue. Yes, okay. yeah. And I, if I'm on this board, I will absolutely get familiar with it. I don't I like to go in halfway, I go all in. And if I can't, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sitting here. Right. That's one of the things I said to Anne is that if I'm going to do something and I want to really familiar, familiarize myself with it, make sure I'm comfortable because um, I go home and sometimes too much. Do you have, or, or have you done this type of like land use regulation work before telling you? Yeah, yeah right. this is all new. Okay. Let's see. Do you know what quasi judicial means and what that means? That was one of the questions. Yeah, it was. It was. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was a little. It means that there's a very formal process. It's like you're acting like a judge. Yeah, you're being a judge. So what I was saying, judge, jury. Talking about accepting swearing people in, and it's okay. Right. Yes. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. 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 A lot of rules. Yeah. We went through all that together. That's good. Yeah, do you have any experience with any legal pro uh, processes? Legal processes other than just, um, no, you're not an attorney, but sitting on the, the diversion board following the process and following the law. Um, that's not something there where there was any, you know, it was very specific in our, in our roles. And then other than my years at 
from Blue Cross is on the contracts and making sure hospitals and employers follow their contracts and do them so contractually that way, yes. Okay. But I'm not an attorney. Okay, that's good. That's okay. It's yeah, good. It's all right. Sure. You know what? <laughs> it's a learning process. Too, it's it's a learning process. process too. That's right. If there were a development that uh, that didn't uh, that doesn't meet one or more of the zoning regulations, what would you do? If it didn't meet one or more, mm -hmm. I guess that's one of the discussions that we need to have, right? So, as I said before, we don't plan out denial. We make some recommendations on what we do, make some changes that we can make, and then they come back and talk to us. And then we'll also go to the field, right? Yeah. Exactly. There might be times when it's, it's just plain old no. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's clear if it's a clear. You should be clear. There is such a thing as a clear no. Yeah, yeah. One of the, the, the one that's going on right now, it was very clear that some of the things just were not going to work out. So we gave them an opportunity to go back and revise what they had proposed. So let, yeah, I, let's yeah. not talk about one that's in process yeah, now. Right. Yeah, that's the general, the general process, idea yeah. is that they're given opportunities and sometimes it'll work out and sometimes it just mm -hmm. won't. And the final answer may be no. Could be, yeah. yeah. Uh, any other questions for Candy, guys? No, no. Candy, I'm thank you very much. And Willa, thank you. I, I, I don't think I said thank you when I was <laughs> telling you we needed to move along. Thank you very much. Um, do you guys want to take? Do you want to take action now? Okay. The motion is. I think I tried to get really clear on what we're. Yep. I make a motion that we appoint. Willa Farrell as a member to the DRB to complete a three year term that ends in 2023. Do you want to vote together or slate? separate? We can do one. Let's do one. Okay. okay. That's my motion. Oh, one motion. As a slate? Just do you want it? Okay, I heard two different things. All right, and then I make a motion that we appoint Candy Smith to serve for one year as an alternate member to complete the three year term that ends in 2023. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And just one last thing, I, I'm obsessive about this. We have a training module that's yes. the video that you yes. can fill you all in on. I'll that. send it to Denise will send it to you. I'll send, I'll send you the link. You have to watch this training session. It's a before, prerequisite. Before you can serve on any cases. Um, it's really easy. Here's just a video to watch. Can you sign us? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. 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 Um, I think we are done with that. Yeah, Alfred needs to get. You want to? You, you, you want to dismiss him? Sure. Yeah. He's welcome to stay for a long time. It'd be unfeasible personally. So, uh, Larry. I'm going to give you just a brief history, I think, and then. Do you know everybody here? I do. And Rick. You do not. I, I think I'm sure. Sure does. So this is Rick Keen. You may know it too. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, just a short background on my history. I've lived in East Montpelier for 40 years. I've been on the fire part of East Montpelier for over 25 years. Formerly on Barry City Fire for 20 years. I have about 45 years of fire and EMS experience. Uh, at East Montpelier, I've worked under the capable leadership of Ty Rowland for 10 years. He was the chief. Uh, I was the deputy chief, along with Toby Talbert. Uh, Paul is an assistant chief. So we've, as you've seen and heard throughout the community, we do offer a quality service department. We offer a department that is uh, very strong on the EMS side, so we have ambulance service in. And I think all of you will probably have heard back from members and uh, residents of Catalyst, East Montpelier, and the other towns that we cover that we do provide a, an excellent service. Uh, in my background, I ran a business in Barry City, uh, L. Brown & Sons Printing, for approximately 32 years. And a very successful company. I have a business background. Uh, 
So working in fire and EMS world, working with East Montpelier, I'm hoping to use the, the uh, different skill sets that I have, along with utilizing the skill sets of each of the men and women on the department to continue to move forward to grow the department. Um, working with the boards is always, uh, in my, the way I look at it, it's a learning experience for, for both of us. You'll be learning from us, I'll be learning from you as we work together uh, to achieve the common goal of providing a safe uh, environment for the residents of Catalyst East Montpelier and providing you with a clear and uh, organized, orderly presentation of facts and figures and numbers so you'll know what's going on with the department. It's an open book department, it's a volunteer organization. Any questions you have, I hope I can answer them. If not, I've got the men behind me, Paul, Ty, Toby. Uh, we've got an officer corps there that is more than willing to step up and available at any time. Uh, do you have any questions? Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, just from my perspective, I know I, I think I've missed, the only fire department meeting I ever missed was the last one in all my years on the board. Um, and I know you, like, tell us stuff about certain things that are happening or have happened, but my brain can only hold so much information or I'll, it'll explode. So you, for me, I, you know, it seems like I want to be able to feel comfortable in asking the same question, I forgot, what, that, what does this mean, Larry? I forgot. And not feel like, oh, you don't remember? We told you 500 times. You know? No, I, I agree. I, I totally agree. It's this The department is run relatively simply, but if you don't have the experience in fire and EMS, it can be complicated. I want to understand. And the goal would be to prevent, to provide you with the information that you feel comfortable with it, that you understand it. Mm -hmm. And if there's any question, as I say, I don't have all the answers. I probably have a lot of them, mm -hmm. but I'm more than willing to work with the crew that I have and the people behind me, which is a strong group of people that have run the department for years. Uh, former yeah, Chief I mean, Ty Roll has been on the department for 30 or 32 years. Mm -hmm. 32 yeah. years. Paul has been on it for yeah. a number totally. of years. Yeah, totally I mean, you have a wonderful operation so, there. So we have a, a strong group, group of men and women right. there. And on the EMS side, we have a strong group of paramedics. I'm an advanced emergency medical technician. I do respond to a lot of calls in the area here. You've been to my house several times. I'm, yeah, <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Yeah. Any, my, any other questions? Well, I just want to echo what Denise said. I think, as I said, it's time on time. I just need to be spoon fed yeah. because Denise said her brain will explode. I feel like it all just falls out of my. Um, so, so yeah. So when we're meeting and as we meet regularly with with the EF, EMFD group and the East Central Area Select Board. So what my personal ask is to s support our decision making with the information we need right now to make the decision, even if right. we've heard it before, because I promise you I didn't remember. Yeah. Um, and my head exploded, so. And Denise well, has had explodes. So thank you. That's, uh, I know, I want to make sure we have uh, time. I'm going to ask Rick and John if they want to make comments, but also I want to make sure we kind of process the ask that you do have in front of us. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you. Rick, go ahead. I just want to say, yeah, thank you. And also, Appreciate yeah, it. if keep, keep us as informed as you can about what you're doing and what you, you know, what your plans are, we can help with, you know, liaisoning information out to the community somewhat too, okay. to that. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, it prepares people, and the more they know, the sooner they know, the easier it is for us to, you know, just bring everybody on board. Most so, definitely. Yeah, I'd like to just keep us in the loop as whenever you, you think that's appropriate. Very good. I appreciate that. John? Well, thank, as everyone said, thank you. Thank you for stepping up. I'm, I'm amazed that you're staying. Larry. Well, and we're, we're working. We've got a good cohesive group. We're working together, yeah. as I said, to yeah. provide a, a quality service for our, yeah. our towns. So. Yeah, you, you've done great work. We collaborated on stuff over the years, and I've always been impressed by Appreciate how that. thorough you are.
Thank you so much. We saved a lot of lives along the way, too. I mean, that's All of us have as a department. We, that's, that's our goal. Well, Paul Guerra is going to make a presentation, if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Smooth as talking as Larry does. He's, he's smooth. Yeah. He's so, smooth so my part, I'll call Assistant Chief, and uh, I won't go into my history on that. Mm -hmm. I won't do that. You've been around for a while. Yeah. So, yeah. So my part is is I'm the chairman of the committee that uh, designed the truck, and what we're asking tonight is uh, that you needed in writing uh, permission to to have you. The sixty-six thousand six hundred dollars. Uh, so that's what we're asking you to do tonight. Two sixty-six six six seven. That's our share. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Whatever the exact yeah. amount. Yeah. We already did that. Okay. Yeah, we already did that. <coughs> it was in our budget. It was on it. I mean, it was voted, but keep going, Paul. Yeah. So, so there's two things. Yeah. Uh, this, when you get the note, it may be in a different fiscal period. There will probably be in the fiscal period 22, 23. However, the truck may not be delivered yeah. for that fiscal period. So we want to have you set it so that if the truck does get delivered in that fiscal period, 22, 23, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That, that we could get the money from you 30 yeah. days in advance of the delivery. Yeah. Right. Okay. Or if it's not in that fiscal period, we don't want you to run into an issue of releasing money in a different fiscal period than when it was intended to be voted on. Well, we can't. Right. So, so what I what uh, I thought of as a plan is that if you took the money out in that fiscal period, this is assuming we weren't getting the truck in that period of time. Uh, in, in the fiscal the year. In that fiscal the year. The right? hinges on the fact that the the voters approved. The request for the upcoming yes. fiscal year, but there's no assurance that the truck is going to arrive in the fiscal year. Right. And Be so because of the supply. So can we appropriate it out? That's the question. Mm -hmm. We'd appropriate it out in that. I just don't know how that. How that I don't. Well, depends if they invoice us or not, and I think, and um, really whether we think that's appropriate to pay that large amount. What so I mean, what, what if you yeah. what if you invoice? Um, what if you put it into your account that you have now for firefighting? Equipment so that the money is has been allocated to that account. I don't think we can do that. We out we the warning stated the specific person specific purpose of that request. So but we can just we can just put it on the warning next year. If you're already going to prove this, it'll be a rubber stamp. It will we'll just say it's just a technic administrative technicality. We'll just take my I'm not worried about that. I took my uh, so there's no way to. We, 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 if, if it doesn't come in, there's no way to see. There's no, there's no place, there's no place to park that money, and we can't set it aside. We haven't established. We would have to establish a reserve fund, which we have yeah. that money. And we have to spend that because we well, need to. Denise, if I'm understanding, the oh. is the voters have to. Yeah. Reserve funds. Right. Right. Okay. Right. okay. The voters have to approve. A reserve fund, or just setting up a reserve fund, um, and we, we can't like put it in a savings account. We don't have that authority. So, and the money is the money is available from like July first to June third, July first, twenty twenty two, through June thirtieth of so, twenty twenty. So, what if we made uh, if it didn't come in? Why don't we make it uh, set it up as a down payment on the truck? We can pay the uh, toy manufacturer a down payment. Yeah, if they invoice us, we can invoice right. us. Right. If, we use, yeah. if we used our share as the down payment, because we have to take out a loan, mm -hmm. um, and East Montpelier, they have a fund, right, right. which they yeah. would be taking yeah. their yeah. share out of. Right. I could see that working. So, and just kind of a point of information, if you've been here earlier, you have heard that we ordered a truck for our highway apartment. Oh, you did order and they just surcharged us fifty-seven hundred dollars. Well, we got one included. It's thirty-eight. So it might be to our collective advantage and interest to get a contract more formalized and put a down payment to lock in in case they try to surcharge us again. So we're locked in on that price. If you could orchestrate that, that would I don't be think that they do that. Do it that way. 
Oh, really? No. The, uh, we're getting the chassis. When the chassis comes in, I think the surcharges are on the chassis. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, East Gulf Hillier is using their, uh, when that chassis comes in, they're going to use that, their portion to pay for that chassis. Well, can we use our portion to pay for part of the chassis? I guess you have to deal with these on like you You're gonna have to deal with these on later than that. Well, because you, you uh, Sharon, now you must have gotten an email from them. Yeah, I have an their email date. and the board has it as well. So they've approved um, the the Detroit Player Party Partner request uh, like this. They will the town East Gulf Player will pay 133,000 appropriation fee at the time of the fire engine chassis delivery. Mm -hmm. um, the board authorizes uh, use of up to 250000 from the capital reserve fund for the purchase of the twin fire engine. The board expects to be provided with a copy of the purchase contract when finalized. And third, this is on the bond remainder fund. Oh, that, well, that's, that's, totally that's, that's different. That's different. Okay. That's different. So, so, but because of the way, what I'm understanding is that because of the way the fund is, is Set up with East Montpelier, there's different options there. Is that correct? Okay. So we're done. We're talking. You're talking about the building bond. Uh, we got we got a couple of different things going here in this, yeah, in this request. All right, so okay. I'm only talking this about is, this is what I got. Yeah, permission okay. on the sixty-six thousand from the town of Paris, and right. how we want to deal with that. But if you want to it, it uh, deal with Bruce uh, and, and use your portion, uh, but we need to do that soon. Right. Okay. And then so that will solve the issue about well, we're gonna uh, need putting some, it into another account. Well, we're going right. to need something to show that, because the, the way the warning reads, for the purchase of a fire engine truck from the East Montpelier Fire Department, and it's an amount not to exceed 66, 667. So we would need some kind of an invoice that's truck related. Um, we have to have, know like when, because we have to take out a loan. So we need to make a note and we need to talk to um, the interim treasurer about setting up a loan because we don't know when we need to come, when do we need to give you the money is the question. Because as soon as we take out a loan, you know, we're going to be paying interest and then there's payments. So we need to know it's when you're to, looking for that money. The truck, we, we, they don't even know when the truck's coming in. It's the same, did you guys actually buy a truck or are you waiting for a truck? We're waiting. We're waiting. It's the same with us. Yeah, we're waiting. Well, no, it's the same thing. So we don't know when it's coming in. Uh, so yeah. so, I've heard, so I'm hearing two options. One, give us give us an invoice that we can pay um, based on a, a in due course, right? Something that's legitimate. And the other option is that we warn it again. You should have that. An invoice. You should have a copy of the. Is this it? Yep. At the second page of that, it shows the price of the truck. I should have the price of the chassis. Okay, so it is. Let me see what you're looking at. Yeah, at the very bottom. And that one kind of box. It's uh, the chassis is like a hundred and three thousand, something like that. Chassis arrival at twenty payment. I don't know which line, Paul. What that is it which? Amount. Upper left. Upper left. 113. 113. Yeah, upon, upon chassis arrival of time. It's 113. And it's not there yet. Oh, hold on. Right? <laughs> oh, it's going to be a long way I'm just away. wondering, you know, if we go to the bank and say we're taking out a loan to put towards this, this chassis in this amount. Um, I guess I'm gonna that's not an invoice, though. No, no it's that's not just telling showing it's you. Just, this is just on right. the, the letter right. that, we, we, that we need that we need to get signed, but we don't want to sign it until we get right. clearance that you're gonna release that money. I think I need to talk know. to Sandra to see what we would have to do. What the loan process is. What is the bank gonna want to see? Right. For us to take out oh. this loan for sixty six plus. Thousand, so I think I need to Do we back. get a loan or a line of credit up to that no, amount? No, it's a loan. It's a loan. So, okay. Well, I know, but what would the bank, I mean, we're not going to take out two loans if we're only funding 
the, a, for, if we were funding it in stages, if they were paying a share of the total amount for the chassis and then the remaining share in a second, as a second. No, the, the Eastbound Pilot would be the difference. So oh. They've so, already agreed that, yeah. yeah. They've already now, yeah. but they've agreed to pay the 133. Right. So if, right. You guys want to, if you guys want to talk to them about using your 66. Oh, okay. Yeah. Towards, of, towards that. And that would, that would use up, utilize all the money. All the money from you guys. Oh, okay. Right. Plus and that's whatever right. balance was. But we would still control. need something to substantiate a down payment. Which, right. Yeah. Right. Which is the conversation I need to have with Sandra. What do we have to have to show the bank that we want to take out this loan for five years? So I may need. I'll have to talk to her first, and then I need, may need some additional information. Okay. Um, Does that make sense? Yeah. It would just be the down payment. Like an invoice. Payment, you know, from I'm guessing from, from tolling this. probably right. Yeah. The or, or a contract that requires a down payment by a date certain. That would be fine too. Right. Yeah. That'd be right. Good. But I need to understand better from our interim treasurer what what do we need what do we, what do we need to have to go to the bank with to ask for this amount of money? I would think that that letter is plenty because it shows on that. That's a letter be, that we'll be signing. Might, it, might, it might very well be. Yeah, we're, seen, we'll be signing that as, as the showing the price of the overall truck and the. Well, chance. I think when I saw this, I asked. It says something. And it's like, well, is, where's the signature? This is a proposal. All right, where's the signature page? But yeah. apparently, there's well, one. It maybe, maybe didn't come through. Uh, I can rapidly send it to you, yeah. Yeah. the whole package. But yeah. the signature page, you people would not be signing that. No, you would. We would. Yeah. Right. Right. right, right. But we need proof to go to the bank and say we need a loan for this amount of money. We pass it in our. So I, 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 I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. The, the, uh, what, I, what, what I was afraid of is that if we sign that approval letter for $426,000 right. and, and then we keep uh, spinning our wheels and getting that $66,000. No, we, we, it's already been approved by the vote. We have no say. We just right, right, right. voters. But, it, but it's not committed to us. It hasn't been committed. I think, so what we have to do is we have to close. You follow me? I need to find, I need I, to. I do. Well, I need to find yeah. out what we have to do to go to the bank. What do we need as the town to go to the bank and ask for this loan? So that's the first step, mm -hmm. so that I can let you know what do we have to have. So, if, so tonight, can we are, are we going to get permission from you that we're going to get have that money released to us? That's what I'm looking for. We are, so what you're hearing is our um, our eager intent to figure out a way mm -hmm. to honor the vote from the town, get you the money you need in the time frame you need it, all legally, right. so that you can buy the fire truck. And, and, and the hard part is in this climate, we don't know when you're gonna get it, which makes everything kind of weird. But it is absolutely our intent to figure out a way. I will call. There's a couple of options we've already outlined. Right. So I'll I will call Sandra tomorrow and ask her what we need to have mm -hmm. from from the fire department or the truck company or whatever to take out a loan and when and how soon can that happen? Does that make sense? Can we delegate signing authority to you or Denise and get if we get that resolved? I think what we want to delegate to Denise is just, just to find out just acknowledge that she's going off to gather information. I'd rather bring the information back. To the yeah, this is a big one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So, just, yeah. Have to speed. So, so, so we we we're not going to make any motion tonight. Maybe that's an answer to your question. Well, there's no motion to be made because the money's already been approved by the voters. We just have to figure out how to get it to you. That's our job. Well, what's what's the what's the authorization? We have the authorization to buy a truck, to you know commit funds to buy a truck or two. But we have to figure out what does it look like when we, when there's not a truck coming, right now. <laughs> right. What does it look like to be taking a loan out to to get you money in advance, yeah. basically? Okay. So if you were to talk to uh, East Spot Player, that may be a better route to have you buy the chassis. Because I get a feeling the chassis will be coming in, obviously long before the truck will be coming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that, and then have that, you that, use the money right up as soon as yeah. you take, take yeah. the note. No, no, no. And we would, 
we would be notified of when that truck would be coming in, that's a chassis. Okay, that yeah. might be the better option. Yeah. I can yeah. talk to Bruce about that, depending yeah. on, either way, we'll see that loan. Well, I yeah, either, right, right. either way, I need, yeah. need information. Well, yeah. either way, we need, we need the, the money, the expense um, substantiated. Right, yeah. 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 The, the invoice. You know, an official piece of paper that says, Dear Cows, we are providing you with a chassis for, for the East Ontario Fire Department. Please give us much money. Right. Okay. So what's the chassis cost? I think it was 103. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So and so the difference would be made up by East Montpelier? It says chassis 133. East Montpelier is 133,000 yeah, something. Yeah, but in terms of the chassis. Oh, right. Yeah, they would make, so, right. They'd make up. So they're going to have to take up two loans? Or they have, oh, they have money. They have money. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they have yeah. money. Yeah. Yeah. The vote from East Mount Bay was to pay for the chassis when the chassis was delivered, the, and they were going to pay their full portion of the 133-333 with the estimated chassis delivery date of early 20, FY20, or 2023 is when the estimated delivery date of the chassis is. All right, so, so that, well, we, we, that's not an option well, for us. Well, They've well, already taken that vote last week at their meeting. Oh, it's like it says nine it's people. Good. They're going to pay 130 people. So you might have gotten a revote. Yeah, they can revote it. They can always, yeah, they can okay, do a revote. I thought you meant it was town meeting. They can do a revote. They can do a redo. The, the option is how late do you want to pay for it? Because we don't have to do from there. There's no payment due until the delivery of the truck. So you could do 30 days prior to delivery as long as you can allocate the monies in some fashion within FY23. Right, it'd have to be FY23 yeah. or else. And if you do that, you don't have to take a loan for a year, so they're estimating the construction of the truck to be 450 days. I think what I'm hearing, Ty, is the disconnect between your point and, and Denise's depth of knowledge about how this has to work is that allocating it in, in a sort of conceptual sense has been done because the voters approved it, but we don't have the money in our pocket. We have to go to the bank to borrow money for this purpose, and that's got to have some basis. Right, we gotta have, we gotta but figure out you, what that you could sit for a year and not take a loan for another year. It just and close it out just before the end of FY twenty three. So you may get it approved. So, right, so you're, not, you're not paying interest for a year on that truck. Well, that's one of the things I think we need to find out. That's from, 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 from if the bank if can when, do that. If when right. Denise connects with our interim treasurer, half a dozen new questions emerge or. I assume Larry or Paul, you guys are would be available for mm -hmm. Denise to pull into a conversation. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. Then I'd want to come back to the board with here's here's yeah. the here's options. Here's the two options. Right. And then I don't want to make So we will yeah. we I'm will oh, oh, does that make sense? No, hang on. Oh. If you're gonna move on to the other item. No. Okay. Still on the fire truck. Okay. Yeah. Before we leave fire truck, don't let me forget to get from you guys the date that we need to have this on the agenda again, but keep going. Okay, the other part is, again, the permissions to take out of our, our capital account, the fire department's capital account, the ability for us to uh, pay our loan of 200, it, it's, it's gonna be between 225 and 250, 250,000. Yeah, so we're looking to get that permission to remove monthly, to pay the monthly note every month to pay for that note. We're looking for permission now, uh, even though it's, it's going to be down the road another year and a half. For this truck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're just kind of get, get that part of it done and out of the way. So move. Yeah. Second. Can you tell me the verbiage on that motion then? Yeah, Paul, if you were if you were in charge of actually making the motion, what would you say the motion is? Uh, if we could have permission from the Chief Spot Player, or Dallas yeah. Select Board, to give permission to the fire department to withdraw money from our capital account to pay the note uh, for this new fire truck. It's from the East Montpelier Fire Department capital yeah. account. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's going to be between two hundred and twenty-five and two hundred fifty thousand. So we're authorizing, our portion. We're authorizing you to spend your money. Because right. Because That's what it well, is. Yeah. yeah. We put checks on that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's the same as when we put the East when Blair and I come up for the auto loader. Right. And we're right. asking permission. Okay, yeah, so, use that yeah. right. so we That's discussed the motion that's been made and seconded. Yeah. Any other discussion on this motion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, so you, you have my email. <coughs> um, I have letters and I have ties. And you want my phone number at all? Or, uh, Your phone number wouldn't be helpful. 
Yeah, um, the, the home number you use, it's 223-3879. Uh, thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Denise, what do you think about the date? I'm going to see what I can get done with the mails. And I had some time to free up this week, so I'm going to make a note. Can we make a note yep. to see if I got things ready for the 23rd? That's yeah, right. I'm just going to put it on for the 23rd. If it's not ready. Yeah, you and I are going to be meeting to talk about stuff anyway, so. Also, I know um, this is. Correct. So we have capital fund monies that are designated as building monies okay. in there that are being saved already. Okay. Um, this is one avenue of request because, again, these are specific items that are capital improvements, such as the pole lights, such as that additional paving through a typically black muddy area. Okay. Um, so it makes sense to use those funds for that, and then you know that item just clears itself off the table. And so when you when you say we, do you mean he's he's Montpelier or? Yes, the the capital department. reserve or is it your food? Capital in the capital department. reserve at the fire department. And the fire department. Fire department. There's allocated monies in there that would go to capital improvement projects and things. Okay. Yeah. So we didn't we don't need to we don't need to create some kind of reserve. That's what uh, I mean. East Montpair has something that they're working on their town as well. You know, they have like if there was a major roof issue down the road and things, but we have monies that are being set aside for that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Uh, does somebody want to make a motion to approve the East Employer Fire Department request for $7,300 for lighting, $5,000 for paving? For paving. Uh, both of those are not to exceed. And these are expenses from the, the East Montpelier Fire Department bond remainder fund from the building of the... Well, it's actually the town of East Montpelier's bond. Right. And um, the remaining amount is 13830 So moved. Can you give me that? Provision, right? Yeah. I'm not following. It's so. Is it in that email? Is yeah. It, that's yeah. Yeah, but it's a big fat email, and it doesn't have the actual the an, an actual motion. So, the the motion is to authorize the um, withdrawal of the final funds from the buildings. What 
did you call it? Building fund. It's called the building fund. It's, 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 it's the remainder of the bond fund held by East, by the town of East Montpelier. This authorizes the East Montpelier Fire Department to use 7,300 towards new lighting and 5,000 towards some repaving. Correct. And Rick moved and I seconded. We can work with that too, Lisa. Yeah, I can help you with the wording, Lisa. Uh, any other questions? Questions? Discussion? <clears throat> okay. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Hearing no. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for this day. No, that's all right. All right. All right. That's all right. All right. Sure that all right. Yeah. Yeah. somebody that you haven't met before. <laughs> uh, but it's nice to have you guys and people we haven't met before. Okay, so yeah, so you guys, um, go ahead. So I guess uh, my question is, what do we expect from a liaison from the select board? I don't know what you're proposing, Marcus, to do for us. Well, well what we suggest. <laughs> Well, no, it's actually, I want to stop you though, because that's kind of, that is kind of the, it's a good question. Well, that's the beginning. The beginning of it is to do the exploration of, okay, what is, what is the project? What do we need to do? Who needs to do what? How do we move forward? So it, it's, it's taking that, putting shape on it off, offline and coming back and saying, okay, I met with the listers. Here's what needs to be done. Here's eight pieces of information that we need and nobody has, so I gotta figure it out. Or Jan's gonna help figure things out. And I'm saying all this, Jan, and I see your brows because maybe the thing is we don't know, right? It's a blank, it's a blank slate, and so it's for somebody to figure out what is what is this project okay. and bring it back to us and tell us what it is and what we need to do. May I appoint you tonight? Uh, well, we've already appointed Mark to do it's it. It's okay, but but here's what we've learned today. Okay. There's new news from Since our district. Oh, from our district news. Hopefully, it's good news. Pardon? Hopefully, it's good Never. news. Never. Well, go ahead. What's the new news? Um, the listers have to do the bulk of the work. Is what we learned. We um, have to issue an RFP. You learned from whom? Barbara Schlesinger, the district advisor from PBR. Okay. So, so. I asked her what the roles were between the select board and, and, the, and the listers and in terms of reappraisal and um, learned uh, that it is the listers who are to initially send out a letter of interest to some of the group of the people RFP, yeah, and then say, we will be issuing an RFP, are you interested in having the RFP? And we must produce the RFP. The so, listers produce it? Huh? Listers produce the RFP. Yes. So my request is, this is also not a town clerk's responsibility, but does this town have any administrative help that can be provided to us? Um, and we aren't going to be able to do this until after our grant list is issued for this year anyway. What is that? Well, I don't know. We may ask for an extension. But usually it's, we can't set the tax rate until we have the grant list. Well, I understand right? that, but, you know. I'm just, I'm just asking. I don't know. Right now, if we, if we make it, you know, the, everything will be completed by early J July. Okay, but so that's, that's our routine. Yeah. But um, okay. we have not been able to finish inspections. We haven't been able to get all the data in. We're, we're fairly on track. Wow. Um, and. You know, whether we ask for an extension, we don't always have to use it. That's the other thing. But that's, uh, we can't start doing the search for the reappraisal until after that work is done. So after the grant list is issued and our grievances are heard and replied to and all of that. Um, and that's because of workload. And we had an administrative person, they could 
get that going. Well, if we had an administrative person site. could help us with writing the necessary letters and mailing them mm -hmm. and getting a response mm -hmm. and helping us set up the matrix and what kind of questions to ask. Because and we what's have the evaluation a, is. In theory, on the books, we have a treasurer position and we have a treasurer assistant. Uh, neither <laughs> are, are, are really populated here. right now. So, <laughs> so, so, so can you yeah. do you have a sense now of specifically like what I heard the task, what the but we need we need a person X number of hours by this date for this period. Can you can you articulate I that? I can't articulate that because I've never done it to be able to tell you. And I don't know, I was not here when things were done for before you hired Ed in 2015. Yeah, it was, was it 10 years ago that we did the... The last the reappraisal was 2015. Some way. Does, but that wasn't an inside-outside. That wasn't, yes, that was a statistical reappraisal. Right. Barbara confirmed we cannot do a statistical reappraisal. This is going to have to be a full reappraisal. So wow. not only that, we have to educate the population as to what's mm -hmm. going to happen. So, so the reason we can't do a statistic is you, you can only do that once and after a time, you, you always need to We've done it twice in a row. And that's the reason, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, it's like, it seems to me like the full blown going in your house, looking under the rugs, was done about, what, 10, 15 years ago? It was longer than that. Was it longer than that? Yeah, we were told we had done two statistical um, reappraisals in a row, two, yeah. 2007 and, and 2015. Years between them, so and and if you have, so that means the interior of these houses have not been looked at since 2007. Yeah. Or before. Or before, yeah. And, and you know, we just, and, and how COVID is affecting that, we, I don't know either. That's another interesting story. But, but anyway, it was an interesting conversation today to lay out the groundwork of what needs to be done. So I appreciate that you've selected Mark to be a liaison, but I'm not exactly, I happen to know Mark's not an exactly an administrative person like this in yeah. terms of writing things. So no, well, though it does, no, I would think that, doesn't VLCT have templates for this? I mean, this has got to be a pretty standard. We have process. some templates right here. It's a 58 page document, which yeah. we just got today. Right, um, right. I am attending a four hour webinar tomorrow, <coughs> even though. I'm not going to be here for this reappraisal. Well, I, I, I know Mark's skill is not some of the administrative stuff, but I think he doesn't have to do that. He has to tell the board what it is that needs to get done and how do we make that happen. Yeah, maybe, he's the, he's, he, maybe, maybe his skill is exactly, of, okay, let's make half a dozen assumptions based on excellent information that you have. And because we have to start from somewhere. If we're going to hire an administrative person, we have to have something. We have to make some assumptions on which we're hire, making a we'll hire. For. Hmm? Yeah, they have to, we have to know what skills, what they're going to be hiring for. Right. We have, so we may, we may not, mm -hmm. we'll know for sure what we need after it's done. And until then, we're going to all have to do the best we can. And if I, what I'm, what I'm my takeaway, if I'm wrong, is that you're asking us to figure out a way for you to have some administrative support. I just wanted some clarification of what to expect, I think. Well, I think um, so, I mean, basically. this might be a very specific administrative support that's needed. That we, you know, yeah. in the hiring market right now, as you know, is horrible. You know, this might be something, because it's from here to here, you know, it's not like you're going to be doing the, this job for the next five years. It's, it sounds like to me like it has a beginning, and it ends, so somebody who's looking maybe for some kind of part-time temporary income, we could do some kind of a contract with somebody to provide that assistance. And, you know, it doesn't have benefits, that kind of stuff, because it's a specific task. We might be able to find someone. I wonder if we hired Toby to do it. Toby well, has to do this stuff. Ooh, well, he's got a brain for this stuff. He has a brain? He does RFP type stuff at a fire department. I do think, I do think that the timing, if, would be helpful, you know, because if the need is during the summer, I'm guessing it's not, then... Well, it's after July. Right, so it's not really summer, it's more like sometime in the September to May, next, during the school year. 
because you know this is this is also a is it does it fit in community development kind of internship mm -hmm. stuff? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's something in yeah. I mean, in other towns, might be looking for some similar help for something like this because everybody's doing it. You could put an ad on front porch forum looking for someone with these types of skills just well, for a single job. Right. You have to be, have to be Toby's specific. suggestion. Yeah, well, he's one. Yeah. Uh, but Toby he might say no. He might be say yes. Yeah. 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 That's a good idea. Yeah. 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 I think we have some specific guidelines. Well, but this, but Denise, going back to what you said a few minutes ago, that is, what we're starting to do now is probably, with your new, with the new news, is becomes, the, okay, this is the, you know, Mark rolling up his sleeves, and I do think it's in his skill set to roll up his sleeves and say, okay, we got a problem here, we got to mm -hmm. figure out ways to solve it. How do we put some shape and, and words on the problem so we know what what solution we're looking for? How about, how about, uh our town lawyer too, just in terms of, I mean, this has got to be a very standardized process. I mean, I don't, I would think that you'd go right to an RFP. I mean, there have to be certain firms that you contract out to, right? I mean, they're... Well, we have a list of appraisers that we provide to us. We have a list of appraisers. So are we, when, when we put the RFP out, do we... We have to put the RFP out. Right. We do that, but then how do we, do, do we, we have do, we a, do we award to a, like a, an appraisal firm, or do we do, let's say, like uh, Martin Associates or somebody like that, or do we? The list has definite appraiser firms that are in here that I sent in the yeah, yeah. yeah. right, and, yeah. There. Yeah. and so right. we have to follow. We have to probably follow that list right. and and find if there's somebody who's interested in doing this. A and we have to develop a matrix yeah. of what we want based on what is there and be able to judge when the RFP comes in. Um, yeah, it's just their selection to do process. The process. Yeah. And then yeah, the select based. board has yeah. to enter the contract and what Barbara has also said, uh, strongly recommended that the town's attorney review the contract prior to signature. So, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. there seems to be um, a well, lot of issues. I mean, not issues, but there's a lot of things. That, well, I'm thinking in that, in the selection process, I mean, the criteria, you know, usually you want to have uh, person performance, you know, recommendations mm -hmm. from, and then you want to have samples of work. And Rick, I, I think we, find, we have qualified appraisers, this is what they do for a living. This, yeah, is, not, yeah. this is not building an interstate. That's, yeah, that's not we're, part we're of looking for people to go in, see if they put new sheetrock up, okay. see what, and understand what the overall value of, of Renovations is yeah, in the house. Yeah. I get it. I work with. I, and it's going to be. They're going to be in and out. They, they're going to go from one house to another in twenty minutes, I, if that. I know. I actually manage real estate okay. contractors that do this. It works. Okay. Okay. Crazy. Well, that's why I asked. Yes. I mean, it's okay. not. It's not rocket science. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's a whole long list of people. You might know some of them on the list, right? I probably know all. <laughs> if they're a company, yeah. I mean, they're only they're in. But when we, when if if the. Listers have to draft an RFP. I'm certain that we would ask our town attorney to review right. the RFP. And if all these towns are doing this, chances are they know about it. Right. Yeah. So, so Jan, we we hear you on the administrative um, help. How many times a week do I say we need administrative help, Denise? Mm -hmm. Eight times a day. So, totally hear you, totally get it. Um, if you can be thinking about, yeah, what the task is, what the time frame might be, um, and what the, you know, is it a full-time job for eight weeks, is it a half-time job for eight weeks, that kind of stuff, so that there's, it's got a shape. That will be helpful for us to figure out, and yeah, and the task and skills. So then we, then, you know, then we've got to go into the budget and, find money that we didn't budget for, right? And when, when would it start? I mean, we're gonna to have to advertise for it. Well, like I said, this market is pretty tight right now. Well, the, the, we don't have to advertise. What the recommendation is, you send a letter, a blanket uh, letter of information mm -hmm. asking them. No, I'm talking, tell, about, the I'm talking about, about this. I'm talking about the administrative help. Oh, the administrative. That's right. that. The bottom line is that's what I'm hearing you need from us is is authorization 
and a budget to hire an administrative person. Well, I, I have a question. It seems to me that what Jan was saying, if we had a generic letter, one pager, FYI, in the coming year, the town of Callis needs to do a top to bottom appraisal. We're sending this to a, a, a larger a a list than you, you and, and you have any experience in doing whatever they call it, the top to bottom. They may say, we're looking for anyone who might be interested during this time frame to do whatever that term is. That simple letter, when they respond, they'll say, yes, this is what we've done in other towns. No, the, and the, 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 the way we were, the way I was recommended to me is, we are getting ready to do a full reappraisal. Are That's you interested? We will, and we will be issuing an RFP. Right. Are you interested in receiving it? That's all the letter has to say. Okay. Then they respond back to us and say, yeah. Well, we, we should do we wait. should do that sooner rather than later. Yeah. Well, I, say, I, I understand that. <laughs> um, but and we I can do that, that simple letter is what we're saying right now. Well, you're talking about that, but we're talking about an administrative assistant. Just two no, I, I know, but I'm just saying that doesn't necessarily mean if it's a simple letter like Jan just said. <laughs> We could That's true, but you want to have the RFP ready to go to. Well, <laughs> well, well, at least you would get some, you, you know, there's a, the thought that that would give you some indication of who might be interested, but if the whole state is doing this, there's going to be a lot of those letters going out and a lot of responses coming back, and then if you're not ready to issue the RFP, they could get taken up with yeah, other yeah. towns and now you're out of luck. But sometimes, I, I was thinking, someone just says, yeah, if they respond and say, yes, we're interested, and we've done this 500 times, we might then be able to call them and explore with them. Could you assist us in, in terms of the information we need to include in our RFP? Maybe we could pay them up. Yeah, we could even ask Ed that. I mean, I'm not worried. Or we could hire Ed to do that. Well, you know, I mean, do the, that. we can't really hire Ed to do that. <clears throat> well, mean, he wasn't do that. Let me see what this webinar is tomorrow, which yeah. it gets okay. all the training and all that stuff which it would to, yeah. on how to and what to do. And then I can more apt answer your questions as to you're going to have a lot of coffee. The I'll, time frame. I'll, I'll go to work and I'll look at the appraisal firms that we we do appraisals all the time, so we I write the RFP for the contract for those. Mm -hmm. Oh, but that's. I mean, but it's not for town lights for state property, state. but if, you know, I can get a list of who we typically send our piece on to. I don't know if they do this type of work, or is it more commercial? Well, the state's provided them. Yeah, that's, that's, you've got the state's yeah that's, that's not the hard part. And, yeah, and, okay. and, and, and you've got well, it, it may be a simple okay. matter of, of, you know, you send the letter. Well, well, I'm thinking a lot along those lines, Jan said, Ed could do that. So if, if a phone call were made to Ed and say, you know, Ed, we're, we're going to be doing this, I'm sure you got that feeling this is coming down given what's going on with the real estate market. And Ed might say, yeah, I'm not interested. But if we said, would you be willing to be hired just for the administrative task of putting together an RFP to well, go to other uh, appraisers? Ed might say, yeah. He might, but he might not because I've heard he's really super busy doing these things. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> and okay. He is, and busy. he is already, yeah, he, he, he does all of that. For his company that does the appraisals. So, oh, okay. Well, you know more. And, well, and, and the yeah, putting together yeah. the RFP is not what I imagine to be the administrative task. The administrative task, right? Yeah. That, that's brain work. That's not administrative. That is, well, administrative, I think, administrative people have to have a brain. No, 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 I get that, but I'm saying that's that's very, very substantive. What I would imagine that the, the administrative work is taking the RFP that I would imagine you guys mm -hmm. are maybe with some, some outside mm -hmm. consultant input, you're developing RFP. Mm -hmm. The administrative person is compiling it, sending it to everybody who is interested, mm -hmm. following up maybe with a reminder, mm -hmm. cataloging who <coughs> came in by the deadline you set, making the appointments. And they, yeah, all of that, that to me, so I'm, I'm not saying people don't need it. Everybody has to have a brain to do the work they have to do. be organized. Yes, but it's, but it's the, but the substantive piece of putting together the RFP is not what you're looking to No, I'm looking hire. for that person who will monitor, do the matrix, help us with, we do our right. interviews, because right. I guess we do the interviews. Somebody and then will, we provide yeah. to you a final list. 
yeah. of people who we think will do it, and then you get the final interview mm -hmm. choice, and then uh, decide who you want um, to be in to be the contact. Yeah, and I could I could see VLTT getting more involved in this whole process, knowing the whole state's going to do it, and maybe having some. Um, we must have templates. templates some advice. I could see VLCT really. Yeah. It's going to reference. It's, it's, it's going to reference statute. It's, it's going to. It's going to put all the requirements about insurance requirement, all those standard things that you have to have. You know, and insurance limits and so on. You know, everything. Right. I'm guessing that that's standardized template. Then we wouldn't. I would write, think so. Yeah, I mean then. And our administrative person wouldn't know that. That's illegal. So right, right, but it's yeah. that's that's why I mean what we'd be filling out is the what what's the scope of this? Uh -huh. What are the what are we appraising, you know, how that's gonna be yeah. and then how many properties have right to so so Mark so so circling back we we've, we've asked Mark to work with you guys. Uh -huh. Um your ask from um, I just want to make sure that we're, we, you know, capture with some clarity what you're asking for. You're making us aware that there's a different understanding of the process, um, and that we, you're asking. It still comes down to you're asking us for some to to authorize administrative support, which I, I I still I mean we can I don't want us to be doing that in a vacuum. I think it would be really helpful for us to understand. Mm -hmm. What your job duties? What the duties are, and what the what the time frame is, because we're gonna really all we're gonna do is offer you a budget. Okay. It sounds kind of like a project manager, basically through. Huh. Are you thinking like through the whole appraisal process? They would manage the execution of the RFP, so they'd work with you on on doing all the selection process, and then they would keep the deliverables moving, or do you do that, you know, as, as this progresses? I think the deliverables are res the responsibility of the people doing the reappraisal. And they are also, I think then we have to decide, last time it was a combination of us listers and the appraisal company who did the grievances, but it's a totally separate, uh, separate, item of grievances and it's it, it's separate from what we do every year so I mean there's I you know I'm looking at Jamaica's RFP uh, and, and seeing what they have so you know it's, oh. it's pretty well laid out yeah, yeah I mean yeah, I mean, just, I think it would be pretty standard yeah well I think it's this person though you you clearly don't have a lot of bandwidth I mean that administrator was probably probably go beyond the RFP we go beyond the assignment of the contract yeah. do they manage it right through to the end when when you get those final deliverables because you have to keep the contractors on track to uh, making sure that they're meeting I, their goals. You don't just cut them loose necessarily. I don't know if it's kind. I think it's usually it's one appraisal firm. They it's go out there and they go out and inspect the houses. Right. They have a sheet. They they fill out. I get it. You know, I, they, I'm just, they have a gradation and then they come back with. I get it, that's all in the deliverables, but then subs. usually I would just have somebody like this, I would see this person making sure that that work is happening. That's what we do. I mean, yeah, I but you're talking highway projects, projects here. This is, yeah. this is like hiring a guy to be in a house. Ours are buildings, ours are buildings, everything I do. I, I, right. Is there anything else you really, really need to talk no, about? No, I guess it's, it's okay. all I just wanted to get you highlighted yeah. on that, because I didn't know what Mark was going to do for us. And we, we've talked to Barbara about this, and... Um, and Denise had a question that she asked to me. Assuming um, that we find an appraiser that cannot do this until 2025, and we maybe have already hit the 0.85 mark, yeah. um, as long as we are making a good um, show that we are doing what we are doing, there will be no repercussions from the state. As far no, as our, as far as no penalty applied. No penalties, really. Really? Because, oh, that, because that's we good. have, because we have, we are making a good, good show of faith that oh, oh, oh. we have issued an RFP and the, the market is such mm -hmm. that right. the, the appraisers cannot get to us until 2025. Wow. Then that is the deal. Excellent. And at least we have, we have shown it. And that's why I felt it was important to start this now. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah because right. I, I had, have a feeling we're going to hit a bad mark next year. 
Yeah. Well, good. 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 Well, we were almost work. We worked nine months to do a statistical reappraisal, which didn't go inside. Yeah, it just right. was going through and around because the biggest issue isn't so much going into the, and around the house and looking at it. It's the collection of the data that you have to put into the system mm -hmm. to change your system and, and all to the data it. that's in it and update it. And so that's what also takes the second. Me measure of time, um, and <laughs> we <laughs> and, we were novices, and here's this guy who's doing blah blah blah. Why? Well, that's where this having a yeah. good scope of work. Yeah. From yeah. that, has that's that's our work to figure out. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. Did. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So we all know. We are. Time. Yes, we are. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Yeah, we are. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jan. Thanks, Tom. Thank uh, you. I'd like no more than five minutes in executive session on yeah. personnel matters. Uh, yeah. Is there a motion to go to executive session under 1 BSA 313A? Hello. Second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.